can I see your faces shining and wave unto the Lord? Hallelujah! Amen. It's a great day to be together here. We are honored to come and uh, dedicate this prayer center. This prayer center is an honor. Our first prayer center to honor our late DGO Simon Mwasi. It is an initiative of the Machakos RCPS team. And we therefore appreciate the Machakos team. Can we give them a hand clap? <laughs> they have done a very great thing. This is the way we want RCPS teams to operate, to move and come together and do things the way the Machakos team is doing. And we are very much honored. I want to read a scripture. Sorry for using my phone. I, I was a bit, uh, I think this program has come a bit earlier. <laughs> Early. I want to read 1 Timothy chapter 15, verse 17 and 18, which says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worth of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, You shall not manzo and ox when it treads out the grain and the laborer deserves his wages. So we are honoring our late DGO because he was a good man and he was a great man. All of us passed through his hands and I think all of us know the help he did in our church, especially in the issues of counseling and prayer. And therefore this elder deserves double honor. And we are very grateful for the GCI to have this vision to have a prayer center. And this is our first prayer center. And therefore, we are emphasizing that GCI uh, is going to have a bigger uh, prayer center here. This is just a seed we are planting. This is not the main thing. It's a seed. And we are saying, as we move on, we will have a, a proper prayer center for all the GCI members who want to come and pray here. Even those who want to come and sleep and, uh, and stay here for a week praying. And this is our vision for this place. So we are very grateful, very, very much grateful. We are also honored to have been joined by some friends of our church and friends of Mercy. Reverend, uh, Reverend Nyamwea is here, Rose Nyamwea. We appreciate you. We appreciate Bishop Kiliopa. He has always been with us in church when we are ordaining ministers. We appreciate you so much. And of course, other reverends and friends of Mercy and the family. So let me introduce our Gio, who is going to take over from here and help us open the place and dedicate the sanctuary. Uh, we are honored, Gio, to have you around. You have led us very well. We are happy to see how many churches we are planting. It's because of the grace and the covering, spiritual covering that you have given us. So we appreciate you and we thank God for you, together with Mama Nelly. God bless you. Uh, let's welcome our NGO as he takes over. God bless you, man of God. Well, it's such my pleasure and my joy to receive all of you into this compound. And also my pleasure and my joy to thank you all for honoring the invitation to be here on a day like today. Let me appreciate also those who have joined us, Reverend Bishop Kilioba together with Mama Kilioba, Reverend Rose Nyamwea, together with other members of different churches who are here today that have joined us for this very special occasion. I thought it was just going to be an, an, an in-house thing, but I'm so happy that God has honored us by bringing even others to come and witness the days of small beginnings. Because we believe God is a God who works miracles and a God who does things which no man can be able to do. We stand before you, myself, my wife Nelly, together with our board of elders here, to dedicate this facility to the glory of God. And we believe, as Pastor Reverend Katembu has mentioned, this is basically a seed that we are planting. In GCI, we have always never waited until we see the, the big picture. We see it by faith, and we begin with what we have. When, Jesus, uh, when Moses was told, what do you have in your hand? He said, I have a rod. And that rod became that which God would use for the rest of time until Israel got into the land which God was giving to them. And we are very certain and very, very clear that we believe that God will give us a very big prayer center here. 
We will be talking about it when we are inside the, inside the tent having our service. But this is just a seed because you must plant a seed. The Bible tells me when you plant a seed out of it comes more fruit. And the fruit is yet to be seen. When people walk in this house, this place, they will find a huge building, housing hostels, housing cafeteria, housing in, 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 in the prayer rooms, housing places where people can be able to sit and relax. It starts the way we are starting. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for witnessing what the Lord will do and what the Lord is about to do. Sometimes it's good to be a witness of the first days. I tell people, those who are with us from day one, when they see what God has done, they are the only ones who can really appreciate God and give God the glory for what he's been able to do. And therefore, your being here today or your, your presence here today is just an indication that you can trust God with us for the big vision that God is giving to us. Allow me to do the duty that I was given to do here today, and I want to start right now. Welcome to the dedication service of our GCI, Reverend Simon Moasia Prayer Center. We are excited at what God has done in enabling the construction of this wonderful small facility, a seed that we are planting today as we dedicate this ground and this prayer center to the glory of God. Just within the, 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 the last three years, God has helped us to own this land and to put up this seed that you are witnessing here today. Congratulations to all Machakos County leaders, the elders and the family of the late DGO, and together with all others who have been part of this great vision that God has given to us. It is now my, it's, it's now my joy to ask all of you who are present today to help me in these dedication prayers as we officially open this JCI Reverend Simon Moasia Prayer Center. Our prayer for this place is, is as recorded in, in 1 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 12 to verse 46, which is anchored on the following dedication scripture. It says this, And the Lord God of Israel, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven and on earth, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept with your servant David, my father, what you declare to him. You spoke with your mouth, and with your hand you have fulfilled it this day. Reverend Simon was a man of prayer, and his heart was always in prayer. I remember the 39 years I served with him. Close to 39 years. This man, no, 29 years. This man never left the church. He allowed me to do everything I needed to do, but remained constant in the word and in prayer. And today, the way Solomon spoke here in, in these words, he says, you have kept it with your servant David, my father, what you declare to him, you spoke with your mouth and with your hands you have fulfilled it this day. This stands as a memorial for this great man of God and a sign that when you love God and you serve him, your legacy will live on. Anchored on these three facts, Solomon made the following petitions in his prayer to the temple dedication, which we are here today to make as we declare GCI, Reverend Simon Moasia Prayer Center. The summary of these petitions are summarized in the following scripture, and I read, you have, regard, you, you have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea. O oh Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer your servant prays before you, that your eyes may be opened day and night towards this house, the place where you have promised to set your name, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers towards this place. That is our prayer that Solomon made towards the opening of the temple. May God do the same for us as we start GCI, Reverend Simon Moasia Prayer Center. This is the prayer that we also offer today. And I want to just mention a few of the things we want to trust God for before we open this building. That the eyes of the Lord will be open upon this house day and night. Can someone say amen? That you will forgive sin of your people in this house. That you will bring rain, you'll bring rain when heaven is shut through the prayers of this house. That you will remove death and pestilence from the land through the prayers of this house. That when men pray in this house, you will hear their prayer. When strangers come and pray in this house, you will hear their prayer. That when there is war and people come and pray in this house, you will seize that war. When they, if, they are, if they are captives in another land and they pray facing this land or facing this city or facing this house or coming to pray in this house, you will hear their prayer. In conclusion, he said, remember the mercies of David, your servant. May the Lord do the same for us here. 
God answered that prayer of Solomon in a most, the most exciting manner. Affirmed his covenant in 1 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 to verse 22. And the most exciting verse of affirmation is the verse that many of us love to speak and love to say. It says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. May that be that which God will do as we come to this prayer in humility. He says, now my eyes shall be open and my ears shall attend to the prayer that is made in this place. From now I have chosen and I have sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be here perpetually. May the Lord bless us as we dedicate this great building, a seed of a greater building, to the glory of his name. May God bless Reverend Simon Mwasa, Mwasia GCI Prayer Center. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. And amen. I want to ask, I want to ask uh, Mercy to join me together with Reverend uh, Bishop Kilioba and uh, 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 Reverend uh, 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 Rose, just come and join us. You are our visitors today, together with my wife here. We move over here. We cut this tape together. And uh, we will offer now a prayer. And being honored with this man, I'll ask Reverend Kilioba, who is actually one of those men that, are, that really was a blessing to Mercy all the days before she came to our church, to make a very special dedication prayer for this temple and I will officially open it. Our Father, we thank you. Before we open this place, I give you praise and I give you glory for what, Lord, you have done, for the blessings that you have given us and for the, bl the blessing of being here to witness with our eyes the beginning of a journey that will amount to the glory of your name, beginning of a journey that will connect with heaven, and even before we cut this tape and we make our dedication prayer inside this house, Father, I ask you, bless each one of your people that is here present. Let your glory be upon us as it was in the days of Moses. When he opened that, when he walked into that great tabernacle, which he had made in the wilderness, and in the days of Solomon, when he opened that great temple that you had given David to build for yourself and for your glory, may that be the case in this place as we begin this great journey to the glory and honor of your name. Lord, we hold the tape to cut it. May your blessings be upon us. And as your servant makes a prayer, may you hear our prayer like the word of God has said. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we believe and we all shout a big... Amen. 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 After we've, done the, after we've cut the tape... The pastor has made a prayer. We have anointing oil. We'll begin anointing right from here and right inside. Amen. And now by the authority given to me, it is my greatest pleasure to officially cut this step to commemorate the official dedication of the GCI Reverend Simon Mwasia Prayer Center. In the name of the Father, yes. and of the Son, yes. and of the Holy Ghost, we do it. Amen. 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 Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today as we witness this seed the seed which will germinate and grow. And upon this place, on this ground, there will be many who will come and find refuge, many who will come and find peace, many who will come confused but live with a sound mind because they will encounter you, Jesus. So we thank you. The servant who served you before us, Reverend Moasia, in whose name we are dedicating this center. God, our Father, he served you faithfully. And we want to thank you. We want to honor you. We dedicate this ground now, this building and this house. Men and women who will come from different directions to this place 
may they find root, may they find purpose, may they find meaning in their life because they will encounter you. We thank you now and we dedicate this prayer center now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has blessed us with the posterity. We have Tony and Ian, backed by Reverend uh, Mosella and Deacon uh, Maswili, who will present. This is the next generation that is coming after us. And we feel that it is important for us to incorporate them in this ceremony. So Ian and, uh, and Tony will present, backed by Reverend Mosella and Deacon Maswili. Please go ahead. To open this building, this prayer center, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 The pleasure to unveil this plaque to commemorate or to show or to signify the official opening and dedication of this prayer center. Dedicated to the glory of God. This prayer center was dedicated by Reverend Charles Mulema Kenusu, General Overseer, Gospel Centers International, on Saturday, the 20th January, 2024. Amen. Amen. Now, um, our General Overseer will lead us and uh, lead the guests to get uh, to anoint the place, the, uh, the center and also make the first prayer in this sanctuary or in the prayer center. It symbolizes, it symbolizes your anointing. It symbolizes your presence. It symbolizes the power of your spirit. It symbolizes the consecration, the, com the dedication, the setting apart of this building, solely for the purpose of prayer. And I pray that nothing will happen in this building that is not prayer. This building is completely, completely, dear Father, set apart for that purpose. This door where I stand, as I anoint it with this anointing oil, yes. Lord, I pray that every foot that steps over in this door yes. will come and meet the power of God Amen. and the anointing of God in this, in this building. Nobody will walk in this door and come back the same, but they will walk in and live blessed of you, anointed of you, and full of your power, and full of your blessings. We refuse anything that Father may want to cross this door. Yes. We bind it and we rebuke it, Lord. Yes. And we command no devil, no demon, no spirit of darkness, yes. no spirit of confusion, or any man of Father shall find its way through this door. We dedicate this door to the glory and honor of your name. And we believe it is blessed. It is consecrated. It is blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Say amen. 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 We will allow pastors at uh, the General Executive Council and the pastors, please, to come in. All the pastors, if you're a pastor, please move forward. Uh, join the General Executive Council, the family, the family. Thank you. The family members, pastors, please move a little bit faster. Thank you. All the pastors, please move a little bit faster. God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you because of this prayer center. And today we anoint this prayer center with oil. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Let all the men and the women who will come here and pray find purpose in life. Let those who come here to pray encounter the saving power of Jesus. Let those who come here to pray find relief and deliverance in their lives. God, our Father, we pray that you will use this place and you will touch many, many lives in the four corners of our world using this place. People will come from far and near to come and encounter your power here because you will release power from here and touch lives and bring glory to your name. So we thank you, Father, as we dedicate this place in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now the place belongs to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, pastors. We will now allow the congregation to go in. Uh, the worship team will be continuing as our general overseer plants a tree to commemorate this day.
in the name of Jesus. Why don't you give a shout of praise to the name of your Lord? Yes, Lord.
our hearts have just come to say thank you yeah. to the father of all spirits to the father of all lights yes. tunasema kuwa baba ni asante kwa yote ambayo uliyotenda amen ulio Jamani unaweza songa tu kidogo. Naumbie Bwana ni asante.
dedicate this place. Can we all raise up our voices and tell the Lord, oh God, you are praises are awaiting you. In this place, we shall be worshiping you. We shall be calling upon your name. And as you do this, Lord, may you hear our prayers in the name of Jesus. Ours is to worship you. Ours is to praise you, Lord. While you do that, to receive all the glory, you receive all the honor. And in this In the name of Jesus. Psalms 40 verses number 16 says, Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually. And I want us to declare, The Lord be magnified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we do this again? 40s. 40th Psalm, verses number 16 says, Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually and don't stop, continue doing this. Let them say, The Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified. Lord. Hallelujah. worship team for leading us through that session. I want to welcome all of us in the presence of God. As we sit down, I want to say a short prayer. Please be seated. Uh, please have your seats as I make this short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are gathered here because we know that we have found favor before you. And as we gather here, Lord, to magnify your name, we pray that God, your princess, may come as you did to Solomon, God, when he offered sacrifices before you, Lord, your princess filled the altar. Lord, your princess filled the tabernacle, the, 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 the temple. And Lord, you speak to your people. So Lord, we pray this morning, this afternoon, that God, as we magnify you, may you receive all the glory and may your princess be with us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we pray. A mighty hand clap to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm happy to see all of you. You look good from where I am standing. You look wonderful. Welcome to this place. This is a Gospel Center's International Service. I want to appreciate all of you for sparing time to come and be with us. God bless you. Welcome to Chumbi in Machakos. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to, we 
are blessed to have so many of our friends, visitors, I mean friends, pastors from other churches. And I just want to um, acknowledge if you are a pastor uh, or a bishop and you're not from Gospel Centers International and you're not seated on the right row or the second row, just put up your hand. If you're in the congregation, you're a pastor, you're a bishop, and you're not seated on the first or the second row, you're a pastor. Thank you. Ushers, are, just put up your hand. Ushers are going to spot you, and they will give you your appropriate seat. There is a pastor there. Please continue putting up your hand so that you'll be spotted. Yes, one there. We have another one there. Uh, please, ushers, can you help us get them seats um, uh, around here so that when we start appreciating and acknowledging them, we will be doing, will not be going too far. Amen. Um, we started a little bit late, but that doesn't mean that we are not going to do what we are supposed to do. The most important part has been done, but better things are yet to come. Praise the Lord. Better things are yet to come. I want to now introduce uh, all the GCI pastors. If you're a pastor, you're not a member of the General Executive Council, uh, and you're a pastor from Gospel Centers International, I would like you to be upstanding. Uh, if you're a pastor from GCI and you're not a member of uh, the General Executive Council, yes, these are our pastors. Wow. Um, now, I'm not too sure whether I should... Uh, that is Pastor uh, Reverend Joshua from Utawala, wave at us with his wife, Carol. That is Pastor Wycliffe and the wife from GCI Mombasa Road. Uh, we have uh, Pastor Pamela from Central Church. We have Pastor Janet. Once I mention your name, please, you can be seated. Pastor Janet from Uruma. Pastor Felix and the wife all the way from Kitui. Amen. We have Pastor um, Stephen from uh, Stephen Oiro from Kitengela. God bless you. We have Pastor uh, Bless Harrison and the wife from Kitengela. We have Pastor Ngari and the wife from uh, Meru. We have George Miner from GCI Thika Road. We have Reverend Alan from Central. We have Reverend Joseph Msila and the wife. These are our hosts here in my chakos. Oh, all right. We have Reverend Joyce Singhi and the husband from Central. You, you seem to be special. Can you share that grace with me? All right, we have Pastor Dennis from Utawala and the wife. Then we have uh, Pastor Ngodiro and the wife from GCI Moranga. And finally, oh, not finally, we have uh, Pastor Amos Dulu all the way from Mtuapa. All right, and the other end we have Pastor Mwanda from, no, no, not Kakamega, from Vihiga, Makofikwa. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Um, I, the General Executive Council will be introduced by our Deputy General Overseer. Uh, all the bishops and the apostles and the senior ministers will be introduced also by our general, Deputy General Vasia before he invites the, uh, our, our General Vasia. I want to see if you are a pastor and um, you're not, I've not introduced you, are not a member of GCI and you're not a bishop, you're not an apostle, please be upstanding. You're not from GCI and you're not an apostle. You're not a bishop. You're a pastor. Please be upstanding. Oh, you're a senior. All right. Okay. 
Now, are there not so many? I think we, we can quickly give them. These are our friends, and I'm sure uh, Pastor Masi Mwasia would really love to hear them give their names and tell us where they come from. Some of, actually, they all, I'm looking for a mic. All right, mic, please, mic, please. Oh, yes, somebody help quickly. All right, yes, thank you. There's a mic there, another mic. Okay, we start with my sister here who happens also to be my neighbor in Ruai. Yes, my name is uh, Pastor Nancy Osumba, a pastor at Family Worship Tabernacle where I serve with my husband. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We have another senior uh, ministers here. This should have stood with the, with the apostles, but anyway. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pastor Tabi Kimonyo from uh, Destiny Life Church, Asukimau. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pastor Wilson Kimonyo from Destiny Life Church, Asukimau. Amen. These are also family members and very close. Then we have all right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pastor Masilo, Kefai, also. Amen. The last time I checked, you were in Tenwek. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm Pastor Lydia. I serve at Nairobi Happy Church together with my husband. Amen. Great. God bless you. We have another pastor behind there. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Chandra Katiko, um, pastor in New Life Community Church and a Creme Ministry where we serve many of you. Lastly, it is difficult to separate Creme from the family of G. Hi, what? Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Are you happy? All right. Let me see all the people from Mayakos County. Mayakos County, please be upstanding. Mayakos County, we, you are our host. You are our host. Give us a wave offering. <laughs> Give us a wave offering. I want to ask Musila to, amen, to appear my coffee. I want to ask Pastor Musila to come. Just come, Pastor Musila. Please be seated. Thank you, Makofi Kwawa, once again. Musila to Salimia na utu ambia karibu. Praise the Lord. Amen. Karibu ni sana machakos. Amen. Reverend Musila is the host, and uh, we want to thank God for his life. He's been such a blessing. Amen. Let me see those who have come from Huruma with uh, Pastor Janet. Anyone from Huruma with Pastor Janet? Janet. Simama, tunataka kujua tume. Huruma, thank you. Thank you. That is Huruma. God bless you. Uh, from Huruma, we go to... Mombasa Road, all the people, all the brethren from Mombasa Road, Mombasa Road, watu wa Mombasa Road, musiangushe mchungaji wenu, musiangushe mchungaji wenu, nda vile ni wangubu, yes, there is some representation, wa kofi kwa wow, thank you, thank you very much, uh, kitengela, kitengela, watu wa kitengela, wow, ma kofi kwa watu wa kitengela, thank you, thank you kitengela brethren, God bless you. Ah, uh, Muranga. <laughs> Simama, thank you, thank you, Muranga. Thank you, people from Kitui. Kitui lazima wakui hapa. Yes, oh yes, Kit Kitui. Watu wa Kitui. Thank you. Nilijua lazima Kitui wakui hapa. How can you miss? If you miss, unajua mali tutawashikia. Watu wa Mayakos, unajua mali watawashikia. Karibu ni sana. Uh, let me see uh, which other. Let me see uh, Thicker Road. What was Thicker Road? Thicker Road, yeah. What was Thicker Road? Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Tim Yanguvu, Asante Sana. Um, utawala. Utawala. Utawala, mtatawala. Mtawala, utawala, mwatawala. Thank you. Karibu ni sana makofi kwa wao. Amen. Apart from Central Church, any other church that is, any other assembly that is represented here? Pana Central Kwanza. Ngojeni? 
vihiga au vihiga vihiga watu wakivihiga naona mtakodisha watu kutoka Nairobi ni sawa watu wa vihiga <laughs> alright shout your church if you have not mentioned kaka mega let me see kaka mega oh yes oh yes draw all the way from kaka mega oh for real you are there god bless you it mtuapa watu wa mtuapa Aya watu wa mtu hapa wameshikamana na watu wa boy, watu wa Taita Taveta, watu wa Kwale, watu wa Malindi, lakini twajua ninyi ni jamii moja. Amen. Any other church? Any other assembly? Meru. Watu wa Meru, our neighbors. Mount Kenya yote. Na hapa najua hata watu wa Mount Kenya wote wanataka support. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Any other church apart from Central? Shumbi? Amjeanza na mnataka nafasi. The last time I checked, you had not been listed. So, wako. Sasa hiyo unajua ni special. Sasa hiyo ni special. Uh, and I'm not too sure I'm allowed to do the special. But chumbi? Watu wa chumbi? Eh, 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 eh. Wow. Hey, no wonder. No wonder. Sasa, mama must you see why I'm, I was saying, these ones are special. I don't think I have the capacity. And I will leave it to Gio to do it properly. Or Gio, whoever chooses. Thank you. We love you, brethren. You're such a lovely people. Thank you for loving our mom. Thank you for giving her comfort. Thank you for being around her. Now we know why she loves Chumbi. Amen. Chumbi funge. Transoia. Transoia. Watu wa Transoia pia ni watu wa Thika Road pia ni watu wa Central. Amen. Praise the Lord. Indeed we love you all. But we can't close this without honoring our mother church. From where we all stand them from led by our own daddy please gci central be upstanding amen ninyi wengine tumeketi si tuwapigie makofi we can never outdo our mother the more grace we get the more grace they are added kama tunafikiri tuna multiply wao wana triply if there is a word like that and to kick us off i want to ask the central church men's choral lovely voices if you're here please come over if they're not sawa all right the last time i checked they were their representation was there but now since they're not there uh, we move to our main choir, central main choir. Please come. If you are a choir in any other church, GCI church, your grace stems from here. Nainia veterans. In your veterans. No, 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 Can I help you, mom? They will give us a number. Um, Nana ni watu veterans. Tafadhali fanyani jambo la haraka. Thank you. Let's give them another round of applause as they can. From after they have given us a number, um, we shall, uh, as they give us their number, I want us to do something special and I know our ushers are somewhere. We cannot come to the house of the Lord without giving an offering. Sindio. So our ushers, this, this choir is known for asking for money. The last time I was in Central, they were singing while we were giving our offering. So ushers, please position yourself as they give a number. And can I get the pay bill number? The pay bill number for those of us who moved from hard cash 
pay bill number will be given to us as they continue. I'll come back and give you the pay bill number. In the meantime, those of you who have had currency, you can now start giving your offering as they give us a number. Thank you.
This group never disappoints. This group never disappoints. And the word they have brought to us is indeed resonating very well with our service today. And actually, they have sung the words that our Gio read when he was opening, uh, uh, he was cutting the ribbon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you happy? Mnanza ku wamape. Thank you. Now, we have lots and lots to bring to you. And so if, you, if I give you an opportunity and you miss to come, you know, I will just move to the next group. Um, we have children um, from Chumbi. They will be giving us a short presentation. Uh, those children from Chumbi special group, as I said, special group children from Chumbi. While they do that, all of us who do not give our offering because we, don't, we no longer carry hard currency. Please get your phones. Uh, we, uh, whoever is organizing the children, please do so and move a little bit with speed. Um, get your phone. This is a pay bill number. This is our central church. Is it a pay bill number or pay bill number? Yes, pay bill number 844-632. Um, 844-6332. Um, Chumbi children, please. Then the account, put Chumbi. Now, don't write Chumbi the way Waswahili writes Chumbi. This is the Kikamba Chumbi. This is how you write Kikamba Chumbi. It's K-Y-U-M-B-I. Chumbi. You don't say Chumbi. You say Chumbi. K is silent. 844632. Account Chumbi. 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 All right. So let's put our hands together. These are, uh, these are, yes. These are Chumbi. Chumbi children. Amen. Because these are, Sasa uh, and you are yeah? This is the first church in Wapigua Makofi Mpaka Wafike Hapa. Wonderful. Uh, while they do, do that, Ian, you'll be pre preparing. Yeah? You'll be preparing. Okay. Do not despise the days of. You have some bishops here, some pastors here, some elders, and some worship leaders. All right. There are so, so many. You can't see them. Uh, some are high hidden somewhere. Uh, you know angels? Yes, they are there. They prepare. Praise God. Praise God again. Um, Teacher Bridget. Um, but again, I love God and Jesus as my personal savior. And this is the Victor's class. And uh, happy to be here and present to you. A song, uh, Bible verses, and all that. Thank you. Five chapter six verse seven. It says, I will bring you to Zion, my sacred deal. Give you joy in my house of prayer, and accept the sacrifices you offer on my altar. My temple will be called a house of prayer. For the people of all nations. Kiwa dani yako, awewe dani yangu, zabibu wako elisi tanya uka. Nikiwa dani yako, awewe dani yangu, zabibu wako elisi tanya uka. Umeni pa uhai e. Many pounds in my head. Niki wanda ni ako si tanya uka. Many pounds high. Many pounds in my head. Niki wanda ni ako si tanya uka. Well, I'm the people who are calling me to come. Now, 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 now,
wako na wewe ndani yangu mzabibu wa kweli sitanyauka nikiwa ndani yako na wewe ndani yangu mzabibu wa kweli sitanyauka mimi kama mti ulio kando ya mto kwa maji matulifu aniongoza mimi kama mti ulio kando ya mto kwa maji matulivu aniongoza umenipa uhai eh umenipa uzima eh nikiwa ndani yako sitanyauka umenipa uhai eh umenipa uzima eh nikiwa ndani yako sitanyauka baba mzabibu wa kweli nitaka nawe 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 nitaka Amen. I got a crown. You got a crown. All God's children got, got a crown. crown. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my crown. Gonna walk all over God's heaven. Heaven, 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 heaven. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my crown. Gonna walk all over God's heaven. I got a gown. I got a gown. You got a gown. All God's children got a gown. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my gown. Gonna walk all over God's heaven. Heaven, 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 heaven. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my gown, gonna walk all over God's heaven. I got a shoe. I got a shoe. You got a shoe. All God's children got a shoe. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my shoe, gonna walk all over God's heaven. Heaven, 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 heaven. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my shoe, gonna walk all over God's heaven. Heaven, heaven. When I get to heaven, gonna put on. Let's encourage them, please. Walk all over God's heaven. These ones wants to go to heaven, 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 heaven. Heaven. When I get to heaven, put on my shoe, gonna walk all over God's heaven. All right. Praise God. Praise God again. My name is Tiana Triumph from Bo and I'm born again in Jesus with my personal savior and I have a poem entitled Confusion entitled Confusion. Wow, confusion. So sit back, relax and enjoy. We live in a confused world full of confusion here, there and everywhere. Do you see this confusion? Stop this confusion. Stop this imitation. In the olden days, people used to greet each other's shikamo, but today they say shikilia uzito. Do you see this confusion? Stop this confusion. Stop this imitation. In the olden days, People used to call their parents mommy, daddy, but today they say Mokoro Buddha. Do you see this confusion? Stop this confusion. Stop this imitation. In the olden days, girls used to wear long dresses and long skirts, but today they say my dress, my choice. Do you see this confusion? Stop this confusion. Stop this imitation. In the olden days, people used to sing, Ni tanguli e buona, mi nata mani kufika. But today they say, Miss Panguingui, my shani angu, I should believe in my angu. Do you see this confusion? Stop this confusion, stop this imitation. Gracias. What do I say? Stop this. Please. Atisipangui. Atimokoro na Buddha. 
Ati ati atishikilia nini? <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, that has made my day. All right. I would like to see that kid after this. And she should be given an opportunity to go around, especially Tony, Ian, Timo. Mumesikia yu maneno? Mambe akunita mukuru. Anyway, we want to thank God. I want to recognize the following uh, uh, churches that by God's grace you came over and um, did support our mom here. And you have come here on special invitation, as I call the PKs, uh, led by the big sister, uh, to prepare. Now, this is where they started. I don't know what they say today. They will tell us. We want to appreciate CREM, uh, uh, um, new, new Life Center. Where are they? Members of that church? Where are you? Just... Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving us and thank you for coming to join with us. God bless you. AIC Ngomao. Yes. Our neighbors, immediate neighbors here. If you are there, please be upstanding. We want to appreciate you. Any representation from there. These are our very good partners. Uh, maybe they are still on their way coming. Worldwide Church Chumbi. Worldwide Church, where are you worldwide? Worldwide, maybe still on the way coming. Thank you. We have Living Word. If you are a member of Living Word, unajua kanisa mzima imekuja hapa. Lakini huyu atatambulishwa badai. Tupigie Living Word makofi. Very good friends of GCI. They will be introduced special. Um, um, PKs, please be preparing. Come over. Um, we have resident association. If you are members, a member. If you are a member of this this society, this community, please be upstanding. Our friends, our neighbors, neighbors of um, Mom, uh, Mom, uh, Masi, thank you. We love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for welcoming us. Even when you did not know us, you trusted us. And thank you for hosting our, uh, our, our mom. God bless you. PKs. Praise God. One, one, once upon a time, they were like that little kid who was here. Senior? Yes. Ah, yeah. Praise God. Uh, Gio. DGO, apostles in this in our midst, reverends, pastors, members, and friends and family alike. Good morning and buona Um I'm here to represent my fellow pastors' children and our generation two of Sunday school children, whom we have grown up with under this ministry. Um, we were not able to make a combined presentation, but just to stand here in support of whatever is happening here. And we are indeed, we have seen indeed that raising prayer generals for the end time revival started with us. Our uh, Gio said, posterity, let's take care of posterity. And we stand here because GCI raised posterity. Thank you for showing us how to pray. That is where we are here. We pray and we stand with our other. I know my people are here, the people we grew up with, and, and pastors, children's issues are different from other children and we can say that and we fellowship a lot and we pray for each other so what you have taught us is not in vain continue teaching us and i'd encourage us here if you have small children teach them how to pray their innocence in their prayers it may sound like it is not well constructed but it is those prayers that the lord hears and the lord honors thank you we cannot wait to see the goodness of the Lord in this place. And indeed, we can say this is the Lord's faithfulness. There's a musician who sat, who sang a song and said, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. 
of the goodness of God. And that's what we are here to do. And the PK, we, PKs, we are right behind you. Thank you so much for this opportunity and for this honor. God bless you all. I want to welcome Mam Nelly representing GBI, Jeshi Kubwa. Amen. After this, once Mama Nelly speaks, Iyo ya, ya mam ku introduce Gio, itakuwa ni ya ku introduce Gio. GBI tumaliziane hapa. <laughs> Sindio Gio. Gio, GBI tumaliziane wapi? Asante, mam. Praise the, the Lord. Praise yours. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Bwana sifiwe sana. What an, a joy to be in Chumbi this afternoon. We rejoice for what the Lord has done. Pastor Masi, we celebrate you, my sister. And we want to say that we love you. GBI mko simameni. GBI, GBI, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. There is none like you, Lord. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Lord, you made us be what we are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Masi, we want to tell you that we love you. GBI loves you. GBI loves you. And we celebrate you this afternoon. We are there for you. We'll stand with you. And this afternoon, when we remember our DGO, our hearts are full of joy. Hallelujah. And we want to say that we love you. The fact that G, uh, DJ is not here does not mean that we love you. We love you and we celebrate you. Amen. Let's give a shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we've come here and uh, before Bishop comes, we have a special group who wants to sing. It was not GBI. I hold two hearts. So there's a special group who are going to sing this afternoon before um, Gio, uh, Gio comes here. And Gio is part of that group. Amen. So Golden Melodies, if you can come up. If you can come up. Golden Melodies, please come. <laughs> Days of Elijah, declaring. 
Bishop Jameni, just clap for the man of God. Yes, and he was our first worship team member. He used to play the guitar for us. And we thank God for keeping him for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, those of us who drove here today, you must have noted that the road was not as it was two weeks ago. I want to ask our brother... Paul Motis here to come. You know, we are God has given us many graces. Wengine wetu Mungu atumetupatia mdomo. Lakini wengine they are the shakers and the movers without saying anything. Wakipita tu unauliza nani amefanya hii? You even don't know. Please give him a mic. We want to allow him to bring greetings. You know, you are, you are not taller than me, so I think. Oh, you are taller. All right. Anyway, so you can greet the church and also bring um, greetings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Paul Mutesi. I thank the Lord for this day. I want to say God is gracious. When we began to plan about this day, uh, we were not sure that we will have the roads made. And we were not sure that the weather would allow us to have the roads made. But one thing I remember last year is that when I accepted to consult and work with the county, Gio, I can be very frank with you that I was not sure that I would fit in the grace. Because uh, it's a new county, we have not uh, interacted for a long time. But by God's grace, I was able to speak to them, and they gave us favor. Amen. I would want to say that uh, let's appreciate Our Excellency, the Governor Wavinian Deti, for, for having very elaborate structures on how the road network should be done. I can tell you that uh, this area was still in the program of the county for the roads to be made. But because of the function, we had to pull it ahead to ensure that we are prioritized. And uh, through a son of this house, when the Russians are in leadership, it makes everything very easy. Dennis, can you stand up? Pastor Dennis. Dennis is currently the clerk, National Assembly. When I felt like the weight was becoming too heavy for me and is a close friend of mine, I spoke to him. I told him this is what we want to achieve. And it's not we want, we must achieve. Amen. And uh, through Dennis, he spoke to the member of the county Assembly who had indicated that he would be here, but this car had a pro uh, mechanical problem and we fast-tracked how we would do these roads. So, Dennis, we want to say thank you very much for the support. Uh, I may say, without this network and the uh, uh, geo synergy, we would not even have had the road done. I can say by Tuesday, I was a bit worried, but I'm a man of faith. The tractor which was doing the road got mechanical problems, and uh, I felt God giving me a lot of peace 
that it shall be done. And until yesterday at 4 o'clock is when we got a replacement of the grader. Uh, I can remember I, was, I spoke to Pastor Massey on Thursday. She was a bit worried. I told her, I'm sure we shall make sure the road is done. I wasn't sure the tractor will be ready. But we had to transport uh, a grader from Yata to this place. It left yesterday around 9, and it was able to get here at 4 o'clock. That is when we began to do the section which we have witnessed this morning. We want to say we are sorry for you finding us not completed the works, but we shall finish. That is why the grader is still continuing and will ensure that this place is motorable and they shall be well. The program for Chumbi is very elaborate. I spoke with the county. They have confirmed that the internal role shall be made and they shall be made good. So let's thank the Lord for what we've achieved, and the greater things are on the way for this place. God bless you. Amen. I want to, to acknowledge Victory Fellowship. Uh, you know, Nikisama Victory Fellowship was imame. Sasa tutashanga Victory Fellowship comprises nearly everyone, except those of us who never went across. But anyway, because they carry the vision, when you trace the vision of GCI, you will trace it there. And the first um, G general overseer of Victory Fellowship is none other than the founder member and the founder bishop and geo of GCI. Amen. Right? So can I ask all the Victory Fellowship members to be upstanding? If you you, you current or even former all right to apigia my coffee and if you want to be future suppose you want to be future angalia watu wa walikuwa nini na wa si watu wadogo ukiangalia ni watu ambao they are shakers and god bless you thank you very much um we had already acknowledged the hosts, that is Machakos County. You know, yes. So um, I want to invite my latest friend in the Moasias Laja family to come and uh, greet us. Also say something on behalf of the, uh, the larger family, the large family. This is... Kiva Lonzi, our brother Kiva Lonzi, God bless you. Makofi mpaka afike hapa. Bwana Sifiwe, thank you Reverend Boru, Gio, and Cake members, all the pastors who are present today. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, one as a few. For me, it's really a great joy. It's one of those days when you lose your voice because of what I am saying. But before I say three things that I want to say, allow me to introduce all the family members. Family members, could you please stand up? Beginning with uh, Mama Masi, I call, he, I call her Mudonua. And then next is uh, Pastor Willie and Tabitha, the only doctor that we have in the family. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm not introducing them in any order, so I hope it will be well at home. That's my wife, Josephine. You can be sitting if I introduce you. And then there is Alice. Where is Alice? We have Alice right at the back. If you could find a place for her towards the front, that would be nice. Alice is the wife of Simon's brother, Benjamin Dambok, who was not able to be with us today. You know, Benjamin is a clever man. He hit so far in Western and brought us Alice. So we are very grateful for that. But we didn't know that there is a man called Patrick who would move like a thunderbolt. 
And he hit Ketui so hard that before we knew it, his wife, Amwende, was in Western. <laughs> and the other child called Baraka, please sit down. Uh, then, of course, there is Shalom and Wina. Uh, please sit down. Those are children of uh, Willie and Tabitha. There is Dennis Mumo and Victor, my children. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes, of course. <laughs> I say that is um, Tony. Where is Ian? Somewhere. Ian, please. Anybody else? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Dawoodi and uh, Jerry. Jerry was not uh, standing. I'd like to introduce uh, other family members. And these are Bishop Kilioba. Please, if you could stand. And Donna Kilioba, Reverend Donna Kilioba. I heard you say, uh, respectively, uh, Gio, that you didn't know that they are coming. So I had to introduce them, because we work very well. When Bishop was seeing um, Mercy in Mombasa and having a fellowship in the Lord, I was actually having a good time with uh, Donna, because we were together somewhere, working together. And God connected us in amazing ways. And I really thank God that they were able to come. I'd also like to introduce, of course, Reverend Rose Omai who has come as a friend. And we are so grateful that you are able to come. There was a deputy auditor general who was to come. I'm not sure where she has come. Please, sorry. It won't be reported in Machakos County. You are safe. She has come as a friend. I'd like to say three things. One of them is to thank GCI so much. We, are, we as a family have felt your love. The warmth and the strength of your love has been real to the family. Since the departure of our brother Simon, you have always been here with us and we are so grateful. We have even deepened the bonds of friendship. We have known more members in the family and you have supported us in putting up this church. I'm sorry, this prayer center. So we are so grateful. I now have more numbers of GCI members than I did before Simon left us. And I think we have a rich relationship and we thank God for that. So through you and Gio, I want you to know that the family is extremely grateful to you and we thank God for you, your leadership, gang members and all the others. The second thing that I want to say is to say how this thing started. And that's why I don't feel as strong as I usually am. I am seeing a miracle here because it was about 45 years ago when Simon and I met in Form 1. And we had a place that we used to call prayer center. And that prayer center was actually in the bush. And there was a tree around at that place where we could go. And we could go to pray very early in the morning. In those days, there was no confusion. If you were praying, people would know we were just praying and praying in a loud voice so that those who had not woken up in the morning could know that it was prayer time. And we prayed. I was the CEO secretary. And I remember as we prayed, we would pray and come to an end of our prayer. And that was praying in English, praying in tongues, we come to the end. By that time, Simon had not started praying. He was still just thanking God. You could hear him saying things which we didn't understand. And when Simon prayed, he prayed. He prayed until some of us left the prayer and went back. And if he did have classes, Simon would pray. And I am saying this, as John would say, as a, an eyewitness. I saw it happen. And I was not confused. I didn't see it happen for one year. I saw that happen for six years. And I stand here to say truly, Simon was a man of prayer. How did that come about? Because that's the second thing that I'm saying, so there's no confusion. I 
thanked Gio. Now I'm talking about the second thing, how Simon came to be a man of prayer. There was a teacher called Simon Mbidi. Some of you would know him. I think he's a reverend, he's a pastor. When he came to that school and he was our patron, he encouraged us to pray. And also, he encouraged us to learn his subject, which was chemistry. That is what he was teaching us. Simon was so much into that teaching that the two things, three things that I know about Simon during that time was reading the word of God. The second thing was praying, and praying for a long, long time. And the third thing is that he fell in love with chemistry. Simon was an A student in those three things, reading the word of God, prayer, and the chemistry. <laughs> it's not a joke. And the school was McQueen Boys, just in case you think, um, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's 90 kilometers from here. It had a mean score of 8.9. So if you wanted a child to be like Simon, feel free to send your child there. <laughs> you never know. So that's where it was happening. So Reverend Simon Bithi is the man who taught us to pray. We had invited him to come, but he wasn't able to come. But Mama Masi, I want you to know that when I called, he said he will come with another classmate called Paul Kikube, who is a reverend also. And they want to come and do just one thing, not to attend a function like this, but to pray. And to pray with the family. So I let you know when they are coming. I think the third thing that I want to say in the interest of time is that if we want to grow, let us pray. This prayer center has been dedicated by two men of God, Gio and Bishop. Uh, Kilioba, of course, representing the family. Um, so come and pray. I don't know much about agriculture, but I know a lot about buildings. That if you want to go on deep, sorry, if you want to go, to go high up, then you must go on deep. If you don't go on deep in the word of God and in prayer, then your house will be like that house which was built where? In the sand. It didn't even require El Nino, just a little small stream coming, and it's gone. But if you pray and you deepen your roots in prayer, let whatever house come. Whatever rain come, your house will stand firm. So if we all commit to pray and continue to pray and deepen our roots, even the church of Jesus Christ will be strong and will grow. Sineo. But if we don't, then we will fall by the wayside. I believe that if we all commit to pray, then Hebrews chapter 11 will have a verse reading like this. And Simon prays even though he is dead. Because you and I will continue to pray with him. Amen. The Lord bless you richly. I know that Reverend Mburu, you wanted to hurry me up, but you always say that, <laughs> So at this time before you come, I'd like to invite Mama Masi to say a few words as family, if this is the appropriate time for her to come. And then we close up with uh, the family matters. The Lord bless you richly. Praise the Lord. Amen. You look good from where I stand. I don't know what the other people were seeing. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much for honoring our invite. And uh, I thought we had a small place, but it seems like this place is bigger than we thought. Uh, Gio, thank you for your wisdom to set up this place here. We would have put you elsewhere. But we thank God for your wisdom, Gio. Um, before I speak, just because, uh, as you're hearing, we, we wear many hats. Uh, thank you, my sister Priscilla, for coming. God bless you. Uh, I want, allow me to invite Vic to fellowship. Because without Vic to fellowship taking over from, uh, that was Simon Bithi, I think Simon would not have been who he was to us. Praise the Lord. And so I saw our Gio, uh, Owen. Let me give, 
let's invite him. Uh, they have a special presentation on how, after he left uh, Dangoretti, I think there was Makueni, then there was Dangoretti, then he, w he went to India, uh, chanting a fellowship and uh, indoor. You can inquire about those names or you check in your map where those places are. And our general overseer, Owen, has uh, a better story to tell about India than myself. Thank you. Then I'll be back. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Owen Ongwai. again. Uh, by the grace of God, I am the overseer of the Victory Fellowship at the moment. And uh, as Pastor Masi has mentioned, uh, Simon Masia was uh, a member of Victory Fellowship and a good member at that. He built this fellowship with Geo uh, uh, Lema those days when uh, we were still students and later when he came back to Kenya. And uh, for us to get that story, I, we thought it's important for us to put that into perspective by just inviting a few of us, two of us, one from Chandiga and one from Indo, just to give us a story of uh, Pastor Mwasi as we celebrate him and also uh, look at the things that we can emulate from this man of God who served uh, the kingdom of God and more so who served Victory Fellowship in different capacities. So I would ask uh, Pastor Osumba, Pastor, just to come and give us a small story about uh, Chandiga. And then I will also ask uh, Pastor Tanki, if you're there, you can also come and give us a story about Indo. He helped start some fellowships in India. And so it's very important for us just to put that into perspective. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Pastor Nancy Usumba, as you've heard. And uh, it's such a great privilege and honor to be in this place in the presence of men of God and women of God. Thank you so much. Before I go into uh, what I know about Pastor Mwasia, as we were praying in this prayer, prayer room, uh, I could feel such a mighty presence. And it's like Simon was there. I don't know about you, but that was my experience. I think the Lord just allowed him a window. Yes, an opportunity to fellowship with us also to see what was happening. And heaven is happy. So, uh, I'm here because uh, the, my colleagues, can you hear me? You look like you can't hear me, though you look good, like everybody has said. <laughs> okay, because the colleagues which, who I was with in Chandiga, that is uh, Simon, Janet, Phyllis, Munyasi, by God's grace, they've all passed on. And uh, by God's grace, I'm here to talk about Simon. So uh, while we were in Chandiga, India, this young man came. And Janet, we were particularly very good friends with uh, the late Janet and uh, Phyllis. And when Simon came, we thought he was very interesting, a very interesting young man. He was very small, yeah, in stature. <laughs> yeah, and he was moving like Prophet Elijah. You know, now you see him, <laughs> and now you don't. But when he appears, he appears with a message from heaven. So we liked also his appearance, because we knew that God would speak to us. But apart from that, Simon was very, very, very secretive. I remember Janet and I would ask him questions. How many are you in your family? He would blush and not tell us. <laughs> Where did you go to in high school? He would blush and not tell us. Very timid. But Janet pressed him and pressed him and we want to know where you were in high school. Until finally he broke his defenses and said, Dagoretti High School, oh, we had achieved information. There are things we learned from Simon. By God's grace, I love to pray. And that is a grace that, honestly speaking, I received from Simon. And Simon would pray and see. 
He was a seer. And again, by God's grace, I received that from Simon. I don't know how it happens. I don't know how spiritual things happen. If I pray about something uh, well enough, I will see the result of it. And I know that grace came from Simon. Another grace, and I know it's not only me, many of us. Another grace that I received from this man of God, Reverend Simon, was the grace to speak the word of God. He would do it so systematically. And that blessed me so much. I always remember one uh, very uh, in uh, particular incident, incident where uh, Reverend Simon came through for me. And not only uh, the prayers, the word, before I go to that story, Simon really raised us up as a fellowship in India. He was very concerned about each and every person. And he spoke to us concerning our life purposes. He would tell us, you're going to be this. This is the grace upon you. This is the ministry God has called you to. This is the gift of God upon your life to each and every one. He told us those things. I really thank God for that. But one particular incident that I thank God for, Reverend Simon Moasia, while we were in India, this man of God, I had a, an Asian friend who I really wanted to bring into the faith. So every time I would tell her about the Lord, and one day she also took the opportunity to tell me about um, their religion, which was uh, this, the ones who were at, uh, sick, the ones who were at Taban. And, uh, okay, in ignorance, in naivety, I received it because I also wanted her to receive my Christ. I didn't become a sick, but somehow I received her prayer book, not to pray with it. And I went and kept it among my books. And I want you to learn from this story. Because when Israel went into the promised land, they were told to destroy everything of foreign gods. Because those things would become a snare unto them. So if you have anything, any symbol, anything of the foreign gods, get rid of it. So back to my story. So I received this book and I kept it among my books and forgot about it completely. A very, very small book like this. In uh, like three, four days, I could feel my prayers are not reaching heaven. And... The, it's like the, I could not feel the presence of God anymore. And I was so troubled. I tried everything I knew to go back to experiencing the presence of God and the touch of God and of heaven. But the, I, I could not get there. So I, I made up my mind. I'm praying about this issue for the last time. Maybe God has left me and I have to accept it. That, that is my fate. So I woke up very early in the morning. I went and began to pray. While I was praying, we used to pray on top of a ceiling of a building. So while I was praying there, early in the morning, Reverend Simon came. And he had written a note to me. So whoever was in the house... Whoever he found, he sent me with that. He sent the person with that note to come and find me at the ceiling where I was kneeling down. And when I opened this note, we never used to disturb each other while we were praying. But that particular day, by the grace of God, I was disturbed while I was praying. So when I opened this particular note, it was the answer to my prayer. Reverend had picked it in the spirit. And he told me, Nancy, I can see you in prison. Some prison, like in bondage. What have you involved yourself with that is keeping you in this dark bondage? Kindly get in touch with me immediately that I may help you pray and break this bondage. Because I can see the Guru Nanak, that the Sikh 
over your life. So I went and I told him, yes, sorry, we're taking your time. I've, uh, okay. <laughs> That, that one has just thrown me off, but it's okay. I'm finishing. Eh? Let me finish as I walk away. So I told him I'd picked a prayer book from a sick person, and this is where the spirit Guru Nanak has come and held me in bondage. And Simon prayed for me, and I was delivered. I appreciate his blessed memory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, the Indo team, they are on the way. I think they got lost somewhere. So I'll just read briefly what uh, part of Simon's story. After he finished from Chandiga, he went to a place called Indo Fellowship. And in fact, initially, there was no fellowship in Indo. So he helped start up an Indo Fellowship. And before he started the Indo Fellowship, at some point, he was, he was a, a pastor in charge of all of India, where we had a number of students, almost 700 students, and he was in charge of very many fellowships then. And then when he came back to Kenya... With the, with the Victory Fellowship, he was able to be vice overseer for Victory Fellowship Nairobi for some time. And that time, Victory Fellowship Nairobi was a very big uh, fellowship. Uh, Gio Mlema was our uh, overseer of Victory Fellowship then. And then later on, he became the overseer of Victory Fellowship for three, three terms. And so that was a, a person for us as Victory Fellowship. We value and we know that Victory Fellowship is standing today. Victory Fellowship is what it is today because of the part that he played in this ministry. And so we bless the Lord for Victory Fellowship. We bless the Lord for uh, this man of God. And we thank you very much, uh, Pastor Massey, for giving us a chance even to share the little that we know about our brother, uh, Pastor Simon Massey. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a clap to our Gio and his team. Uh, amen. I believe we are learning something. You know, as we walk through life's journey, you have many faces in your life. And I think it's not good to forget any of the faces. Because through those faces, you are either made or you make, you make others. One as if you are sana. Uh, because of time, I want to just read this. All protocols observed. I once again appreciate my, my former colleague. I am now retired, but my former colleague, uh, Deputy Auditor General, Joyce Dungu, was my prayer partner in the office, and she's still now holding the candle to pray for the office. I appreciate you, Joyce, for joining us. And many others who have joined, the bishops, the apostles, you'll be appreciated. For those who have not been appreciated. For the sake of time, let me read this. <clears throat> As we dedicate this prayer center, I, I'm just reading a few reflections that I have concerning our journey with uh, Simon. <clears throat> of course, I did meet him. I met him in 1986. Is my mic? It's okay? Uh, the first time I met Simon was in 1986. Uh, for those of you who are still in the, in the visions, you are still a vision and you are still a prayer. Excuse us, because that is our time. As Mama said, we are oldies, and so we, 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 we thank God because in 1986, we had a conference in Nagpu. No, no, it was Nagpu. Chantiga was February. When we had an all India International Students Christian Fellowship after our GO had left and uh, DGO and Eodananjoli uh, and Mumanyi, uh, I can't remember who was the, the geo then, but I remember my friend and uh, rested uh, general secretary, uh, Eldan Anjoli. I remembered him very well because he really hosted us, spoke to us. We were still young kids, just a year into India. And that's the first time I remember I, I met Simon. But now I remember that I met him in a photo that I saw some years went into our marriage because, as Nancy said, he was really small and quiet. And then I realized in that photo, he sat just behind me. I don't know strategically. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that struck us as uh, with, uh, I think, with Reverend Rose and uh, now then we were young girls and Nancy, I had written this year, and Sarah, just to mention a few, was when we saw Simon then, we were scared. And we kept on saying he will see into our thoughts. Before we go to the conference, 
We say that before we go into the conference and meet that man of God, we better cleanse ourselves. So we would have a session in the morning of cleansing ourselves because me and Nancy would be leading the worship and we didn't want the man of God to come and say, hey, touch, and you are fallen. <laughs> it is so true. And so for me, when I met Simon, it was a no go on. It was a no-no. You know, this is not my kind of person. Of course, as we are jumping, jumping, we are laughing here. Of course, sometimes we are having a spiritual face, but when we go, we are giggling at the corner and we are saying, that man of God is seeing me as I'm laughing. <laughs> And every other time, Simon would be sitting here and you see his lips are moving. He is praying. So now I was wondering, does, is this a, a man or is a spirit? <laughs> and um, I, I am telling this story because it is important to me. <laughs> and so for me, um, it was not that kind of a man that I was thinking I will ever marry because me... <laughs> Me, I love to greet people. I want to smile with them. And I remember when uh, we got married now, I'd be, I see someone across the road and I am saying, let us call them and greet them. And he's like, you, you must run after every person. Let the people go. But later on, after we, you know, we, we got into each other, then he realized that it's important to greet those people, even those ones who are across the road. And... When he proposed to me, I think this one I need to say, it was outside Kabu's restaurant, just, af just in between after the church, I had visited Gio. And I need to say this, that it took God for me to get married. And why I have kept close relations with the Bishop Kilioba and Mama Kilioba, when I came from India, I landed into their church in Dandora, Coachland. Yeah? That was our church, a small church somewhere in Dandora. And he received, uh, the man of God received us then. He was just our pastor, Moff. And many things happened in my life. He had to come to Mombasa to pray me into marriage. And I remember that corner, Papa, I remember it. He prayed such a prayer. Not many days hence, the man will come. <laughs> and... Um, And I think after you left, because I was then the, the, the overseer of Victor Fellowship, Gio also came and he prayed <laughs> with his counsel. Because I had finished college and it was five years later and some character was misbehaving around me. And so God had to send the man of God. <laughs> and I remember what Gio told me that if he can't walk this journey of faith with you, he doesn't deserve you. Thank you, Gio. I celebrate you as a friend, big brother, and as also my spiritual leaders. God bless you. And so he, the prayer was made. Within one month, I came to the fellowship. I used to come and visit the church once, once a month. And outside there, after one service, Gio, we are standing there waiting for the Victory Fellowship. He is the overseer in Nairobi and I'm the overseer in Mombasa. So we are talking and people will just be thinking they are sharing ministry issues. Eh? <laughs> so, you know, Simon, I think he didn't know how to hide. If he wanted to say something, he said it. But because he didn't have so many words then, he just came and said, you know, he pulled me like this. Just in the midst of brethren, just aside like this and said, I want you to be my wife. <laughs> so imagine this man that you have been fearing. I do not want to have so much fellowship with Simon because he's always praying, he's seeing things the way Nancy was saying. So I'm like, did I dress badly so that I've... Because the man of God to see, no, what has he seen in me? For sure, I almost fainted out. I just told him, Please, excuse me. Let me just step aside. I, I, I hope I didn't hear it. And he said, I'm serious. I'm not talking about the weather. <laughs> Those are the words he used. And I'm not telling you, I, I'm not telling you I have prayed. Because I told God I don't want anybody who has prayed to come and talk to me until you talk to me. So he passed the test by saying, I don't, I'm not saying I have prayed. I know you have been praying. So I want you to be my wife. And if you're ready, we start the 
negotiations. <laughs> well, long story short, it was shocking to me because <laughs> I didn't know how to carry myself thereafter. And so I went back, I disappeared, I went back to Mombasa after the fellowship, I could not even stay there. So when I went back, I, I don't know whether I prayed or I was confused. But then I remember that the, the men of God had been praying with me. And I'm like, will I measure up to this prayer? Will we only be praying in that house? Or how will that home be like? <laughs> but God gave, gave us the grace. We got married. And uh, my brother-in-law, Peter, and his wife worked very hard to get me to their home. <laughs> and I knew I was getting married to a man of prayer and a man that loved God. And so there were many nights that Simon was just praying. Me, many times he prayed for, for us, we slept, and then I left him again praying. And then in the night I would hear he has gone, he has received a revelation, I think there are people who still have written notes that pastor got revelation while he was praying at night in tissue papers. Please just laminate and keep them. Many times God spoke to him as he was praying. Sometimes in the night I left, and you know he loved to speak in tongues. And me, I had a background of AIC. So when we got married, I, I, me, I pray moyo moyo sometimes, many times. You know in AIC we are told you speak to God from your heart and he hears. Now this other one is higher up. And me, I'm just here, here, or doing this. So he, one time he asked me after we got married, Look, when do you pray? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, me, you are not God. Why are you supervising my prayer? <laughs> I told him, I don't pray to you, I pray to God. So stop supervising my prayer life. And he just said, I'm just concerned. I said, you know, I don't have to be loud for God to hear me. And so along the way, we somehow see each other. I came from the AIC thing that I was. Somehow, sometimes I speak in tongues and loudly. But naturally, I, I just pray quietly. But Simon was, he believed in loud, loud prayers. So Simon believed in prayer so much that one time when I was pregnant with our firstborn, Kelvin, who is not with us here, by the grace of God, he's out, in the, out of the country studying. And I think you'll he he get a copy of what we are sharing. He took me to the showground. That time we were the overseers then of Victory Fellowship. There was a prayer, something, retreat. And from a fri I, I was eight months pregnant with uh, Joe Lale's wife, our late brother. Both of us were expecting. We were taken to the showground. There's no place to sleep. And because the other people were fasting, as we were cooking rice and dango for them with our pregnancies. And I remember I, Simon took me from there to the clinic. And my pressure was up because, you know, we were not sleeping. I was, we were just there and the doctor asked, where is your wife coming from? Simon just says, just, just treat her, we are going back. And from the, <laughs> you know, we were told the way this pressure is, <laughs> you may come back here at night. And for sure, after the prayers, I landed in Mata Hospital and the child had to be removed because the pressure was up. I don't know whether it was because of <laughs> those places where I had been taken, but there was no place to sleep. So for two nights, in a cold night, but we believed God that much that we could risk even our own lives. And Simon was such a man of faith, and he said, nothing will happen to you. We have come to pray to God. And so this child will not come out at the, the, the wrong time. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, as we, we visited several prayer centers with our small children, one, two months, three months, and some of the places we went to were not very appropriate for babies then. And I, we kept on discussing and saying, we can do a better thing than this. So that men and women of God who love to pray can come to a comfortable place where they can seek the Lord even if they are coming when they are pregnant or with their small babies, and they will not have to worry about the things that are falling from here, or the dirt and the hygiene of the place. And in the process, um, I think about uh, five, five, or f five, five years ago, we had thought of putting to, to a, a prayer center somewhere along, where we have some land along Konsa, Mombasa Road. And we talked about it, we were praying about it, but God knew that the prayer center was not going to be at concert. I thank God for the scripture that Bishop read, uh, Gio, 
that it was in the intention of David to put up the temple. I think God honors that intention. And for me today, was when as we celebrate this dedication, I thank God because the intention uh, is being uh, is coming to fruition. And as we look at this small, you know, this a small sanctuary, small chapel that we are calling a prayer center. You may some of you may think it is very small, but when I look at it, I look at the intention being actualized. And one of the things that I really appreciate God for is for helping me to design the desire of of my let me call him my rested husband because he desired to put up a prayer center and in my heart I said I will not let any of his visions that I can I can fulfill go just like that they will not sleep with him but we have we prayed and trusted God even as a family and as we shared with Gio and the Machakos County leadership uh, that is in charge of uh, planting churches we felt that the best way to to carry on the vision that the man of God had is to put up something in honor of his prayer life, which all of us attest to, those of us who know Simon. We, we don't need to be told about his prayer life. Those of us who met him when just maybe a, a year before he passed on, and I can tell, him, tell you that <clears throat> Simon believed in the rapid church, church planting strategy. The vision that was born in 2014 uh, through the, 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 our geo. And when the geo shared about that strategy, the vision 2030 for the church, having a church in every county by the year 2030, uh, this was based on Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. I felt also that God was, cap was giving me a vision in that. And so we said, if we can put up a place where people can come to pray and pray for the vision of the Great Commission to be fulfilled, not just by GCI now, but by every Christian that loves to win souls for Christ, this will actually be our small contribution to the Great Commission. And I thank God so much for this day that he has honored that desire of his servant. And through the hands of the GEO and his leadership and the family and friends and many of you that are partners with us, today we are celebrating this dedication to the glory of God. May the Lord bless you for honoring the desire of his servant and coming to tag along with us. Please come, let us pray, and the Lord will hear us. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We needed to hear that. I want us to be upstanding. Praise the Lord. I want us to take a moment as worship team leads us, in a, as you also stretch, because we are now getting to the, to the real thing. Praise the Lord. I want us to worship the Lord. I want us to get a moment and tell God something about what we are about to do. Hallelujah. <clears throat> of prayer 
in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Holy Spirit of God. May you minister to us today, Lord. May you minister to our hearts, O Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus. You are such a good Lord. You are a lovely Father. Before I invite our Deputy General Overseer to, to, uh, to introduce the General Executive Council and the bishops who are here, and later bring the man of God to read the scripture or to share with us, I want to welcome the uh, women's choir. I have forgotten the, it's called the Redemption Voices, yes. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Amen. Wow, this is a big church. You know, an evangelist will see this and begin to preach. It's very nice. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I see a wave of ring? Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. I know time is far spent and uh, you can take a sweet if you came with to boost your sugars. Because the real thing is coming. The real food is coming. And uh, I have been told to introduce the GEC and the bishops who are around here. And I will try to be as brief as I can. And uh, for myself, Pastor, was a, uh, Pastor Simon was a friend. It took long for me to call him Reverend. But uh, I learned to call him Reverend Simon. Because when you are friends, you just call one another any names. Just say Simon, Simon. And he actually married from my home. Yeah, Mercy is my relative. So you can see you are very close. We used to have some sweet times. We'll have board meetings which would go on up to midnight. And after that, Simon doesn't go home. He tells me, I want to pray a bit. I say, but we are all tired. We are going to sleep. He says, no, no. I feel like I need to pray a bit. We leave Simon in church. So when I, want, when I started going to Utawala, I asked Simon, now how am I going to manage Utawala Church? And I don't pray like you. <laughs> Simon told me, you don't have to pray like me. You can pray. But please look for a team of prayer warriors who will support you in prayer. And I took that serious. And then at one point, Simon became my support pastor. So I asked him, you know, I used to bully him because he was my young brother. I said, Simon, why are you my, my support pastor? What is it that you know? I mean, pastor or ministry that I don't know. You, we used to joke. They, these were jokes. It wasn't like I'm, um, you know, demeaning him. We are just joking. Then he says, Pastor, you can be a good preacher and everything, but if you, there is no prayer, you will not make it. And he told me, don't you want to be, as, to be supported in prayer? I gave up. I told him, please, be my support pastor. <laughs> I surrendered. So Simon became my support pastor, and we have been together all this long. So no more stories because we know who Simon was. He was a prayer warrior. And I'm very grateful, Gio, for giving us this opportunity to have a prayer center in the memory of Reverend Simon. This is a GCI ministry, and we are going to stand with this GCI ministry. And I believe when we begin to do a big prayer center here, all of us, it doesn't have to be Machako's team, but all of us will come and build that prayer center. Are we together in that? Even now, I think, as you know, many people who don't belong to even GCI have been supporting this work. And I remember I attended one of the meetings here where we were raising funds. And I saw many people. 
So this is going to be our work. It's not only uh, Machako's team, our work, and it will be well. That's the only way we can honor this man of prayer who stood with us. When things were so bad, he will be praying for us. One time I asked him, Gio, you may not know. Why are you not going doing church planting with Gio? Because we, there, you, there used to be a team going to do church planting and launching churches. He said, me, my work is to stand here and pray for Gio and support the church in GCI Central. I also gave up. So this is a man who really supported Gio with all his heart. And this man is a Kamba, he's not a lawyer. You know we are tribal Kenyans. He's a Kamba. And he supported Gio so much, such that even in board meetings when we differ, I'll call him and say, why did you support me and you are a Kamba like me? <laughs> he says, where Gio steps is where I step. I say, oh, I also give up. That kind of support, Gio, I hope I will support you like him. I just... <laughs> I now got into his feet, uh, his, his boots, which are very big, but I will try the much I can. But I answer as few as that. So let me uh, introduce our GEC, our General Executive Council. We are called Gospel Senders International. The reason why I am mentioning the name is because we went somewhere to marry somebody. As a people who are asking, which company is this one called GCI? Which company? Because we went and took over the place. Every corner was GCI, GCI, GCI with branches. Say, which company is this? So we are not a company, we are a church called Gospel Senders International. Praise the Lord. So we have GEC members. Let me begin with our national treasurer, a man who has stood with the bishop for many, many years and a very faithful man. He doesn't want to be on the pulpit unless you call him to preach. He is just happy counting money. Uh, this is Elder Eufinalis Momanyi with his wife, uh, Violet. Just stand and wave at the people. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. I think all of you know that our Secretary General went to be with the Lord and we buried him in a very powerful way. But the wife is here today. So I want Priscilla just to stand and wave at the people. Priscilla, we honor you. Sorry. Thank you so much. Our NGO has leaked the, the cutting a bit, but we shall officially unveil the Secretary in General when the time comes. The one replacing our brother, uh, Ernest Nanjoli. Let me go to Reverend Kirungu there. Reverend Kirungu is a Ngeki member, General Executive Council member, and our senior pastor in Kitengela. Yeah, God bless you. We don't have time, we can all speak, but you can see it's about three, eh? Some of us eat at one, so you can imagine. <laughs> and I, <laughs> you can imagine what is going on. So God bless you. Uh, Rev. Kirung, Kirungu and your wife, Ross. Uh, now let's come to, to the team that is surprising us this today. The team that stood here and said, wow, we are from Vicarot. Pastor <laughs> Garu Yamburu, <laughs> Reverend Garu Yamburu. Uh, Dr. Ross is not with us. Grace, she was working in the morning, but her heart is here. So this is Reverend Buru, just greet the people. God bless you. Have I missed any GEC member? The GEC is shrinking slowly by slowly because we are aging, but we are going to have more members of GEC, so don't worry. That's the team we have. I don't want to introduce Gio because he is, uh, he is our boss. But I am the Deputy General of Asia, and we, I want to introduce Queen. Queen. This is, come, come, come. You know, a queen, a queen cannot just be introduced without saying a simple word. Praise the Lord. Yes, I am his queen and he's my king. And we are glad to be here. Congratulations, Pastor Mercy, and we are so glad to see what God is doing. And thank you all for coming to support. God bless you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Queen. God bless you. Now, I was also told to introduce the bishops who are around, apostles and prophets. I hope we... <laughs> Why do we fear some names? I'll just call myself a prophet one of these days. <laughs> I, 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 need, I need somebody with a mic just to go where they are and let them just say a word. Let them... Or oh, they can just walk here quickly and say a word. Stand there where you are. They will come here and just say a quick word. Uh, I think, uh, let me begin with the uh, Reverend uh, Ross. Oh my, please come. This is the wife of our pastor, Bishop Kefa Omai, of LCC Church, a ministry of, Christ, of, of redeemed gospel churches of Kenya. Presiding Bishop. Sorry. Praise the Lord. Amen. There yeah, are very many titles, but we thank God I'm born again. I'm called <laughs> Reverend Rose Nyamwea. Or rather, I'm called Rose Nyamwea. I'm a reverend. I serve in Liberty Christian Center. It's a joy to be here. I bring, uh, I, I just came to celebrate my sister. I've been with Mercy for like 39 years. We have been close friends all these times. She's a daughter of my mother. So she belongs to the Akelola family. And I'm also standing on behalf of the Akelola family. Bishop was in a meeting, but he's on the way. He said even if he finds it over, he'll still come. God bless you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bishop Kefa and Ross are very close friends of Masi. Very close. Thank you. And they were preaching together in Jabapu. Best couple. They were your best couple. That's good. We thank God for you. Now I want to introduce Bishop Malombe. David Malombe is here with us with his wife. Just briefly, Bishop Malombe is, is, a, is an evangelist. He can forget. Praise <coughs> the, oh my, sorry. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to say congratulations, Pastor Masi. Uh, and to everyone else, may the Lord bless you. We are honored to be here. Uh, the scripture I was remembering when we came here is the one that says, uh, pray without ceasing for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So when I heard about the vision of the prayer center, I said, wow, uh, this is our way home and our way back to the city. So there are many reasons we can always, you know, cross over for a day, for a night to come and call upon the Lord. And anyone else, whether you're from Machakos or not, so may God bless you all. This is really good. Amen. 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 Bwana sifiwe. Sita sema mengi, lakini tunafura. Because prayer is the key that unlocks and door. And as we pray, things will happen. So we are part of praying team. And we loved Simon. He prayed a lot. He could search and nakulika mzeven. And we will end up. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Malombe. Uh, he's a... Uh, he is a bishop of a church in Kitui called Bible Celebration Center Church in Kitui. God bless you, Brother Malombe. Um, I want to bring to you Apostle Titus Kiange. Apostle Titus Kiange. This man is a blessing. He has been working here with Joseph Musila. They were the, co the, the contractors in the court. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you to the bishop, the deputy, uh, other bishops in the house, pastors, and everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm Apostle Kiange, and uh, I came to <coughs> celebrate our sister, Pastor Masi. I personally love prayer, and I'm so grateful that this is happening in Machakos and not very far from where I preach from. So you can be sure we will be present here many times just to do what is expected to be done. The Lord bless you and you are welcome. Thank you. If, you, if you want to pray, join that man. I am really, Bishop has allowed me, I'm honored to introduce to you one of the fathers of the nation. Fathers of the nation. The man who began ministry in Nairobi many years ago. 
and he has been our papa for many, many years. He has even been part of us in ordaining ministers. When Bishop was celebrating some years recently, he came and uh, uh, renewed his vows for us. And actually, he's one of us, and we love you, Bishop. So I want to bring Bishop Moffat Kiliopa to come and greet us together with his wife. Great friends of mercy. These ones, I can give them a few more minutes. The Uyu ni Papa, so Papa uwezi kumu. Kumuambia asmame. Mwache, nianze na manzi wangu uyu. Praise the Lord. Bwana sifiwe. Uh, I want to thank God for giving us this day to be here and to see the dedication of this prayer center uh, in honor of our departed brother, Reverend Mwasia, a man who loved prayer. As I sat there and I heard, you know, the testimonies, uh, nobody can really doubt it because the Bible says, at the witness of two, let every fact be established. And everybody who has stood here has talked about how Reverend Marcia was a prayer warrior and he impacted the lives of so many people. So I celebrate you, my daughter, for carrying on the vision because for some of us, maybe if we were in her shoe, we would not have thought of carrying on the vision of our spouse after they are departed. But because you lived with him, he also touched you, and uh, I believe uh, you stopped praying quietly because, you know, <laughs> now, now you pray loudly. But we really thank God, and uh, we believe that uh, many people will come here to pray, and the lives of many people will be touched, and their lives will be changed. We honor you, Bishop, even for supporting this vision because mercy alone would not have done this great work but for all the people who stood behind her to see that this vision comes to fruition, may the Lord bless you abundantly. We stand here with so many hearts, you know, uh, Peter had already introduced us. Mercy is, is our, our daughter, and so, you know, we are part of the family, and uh, we really thank God, and we rejoice to see what the Lord is doing. I believe this is only but a beginning. You are going to open that uh, prayer center, and we pray that the Lord gives us many years to live so that we can also be a part of that and even also pray in that prayer center. God bless you so much, and thank you for having us. Sante, Sante, Sana, thank you. Ibuana Gio, pamoja na mama, wauduma wa injili, watumishu wa buwana, Kwa hii kanisa ambaye inaendelea kugusa na kutransform maisha ya watu. E, sio Nairobi tu na sio Kenya tu. Lakini maono ipanuke mpaka kwa dunia mzima. E, au ni aje. Sikitu kizuri kuhusambazu wa watu wengine wa kule kidogo ya. Eh? Na hiyo ni hiyo. E, binti yetu, we are proud of you. And uh, we will always be there for you when you call us. Bwana I stand with you, I support you, I pray for you. Uh, if there's anybody talking anything negative about you and the ministry, rest assured Moffat will not be part of that. I will walk away and go. Uh, I don't have to sit in those kind of sittings. So I am very honored to be here and may the Lord bless you for what you have done for our brother Mwasia to remember uh, his journey of prayer and uh, to create a place where that can continue. Amen. God bless you so much, Asante. Thank, Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, our bishop is uh, Bishop Emeritus in uh, our uh, church, Pepper Church, Don Home. And uh, he has a son here who he gave us freely. The son is there. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Unjuru, <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate you. 
Gio, uh, before I give you the mic, I want to make an appeal, a, a very humble appeal to the Gio and the ministry of GCI. This is our first prayer center, our first GCI prayer center. Several years ago, I took Victory Fellowship when I was the overseer to go and pray somewhere, to have a night of prayer and pray through. And when we went and looked at the rooms where people were sleeping, people were sharing beds, people had stayed there for very many days. Some had done like 40 days prayer and fasting, as we had gone to do a night of prayer fasting. So it was very small comparatively, a night and a day, a Saturday. And uh, we couldn't find anywhere to sleep because of the way the place looked. And it was a good place, but the way it looked, we couldn't share beds, we couldn't sleep there. So hi, and uh, my brother Vincent, Pastor Vincent in Canada, we slept in my car. We slept inside my car. I didn't know cars can be cold at night. na <laughs> And then when in the morning we woke up, we went into prayer. And I felt in my spirit, we need a better something. Where Bishop Kileofa can come and sleep in a good, like a five-star hotel, uh, where, where you can sleep well, and then pray, because we'll have energy to pray. I don't know whether prayer warriors like Apostle Kiange would like us to be on the floor all the time, but sometimes you may want a comfortable place where you can sleep and wake up and pray, sleep and wake up and pray. I wish there is a way in our program as we continue building the, the so-called sheepfolds. There was a way of squeezing this prayer center somewhere so that we can build this beautiful prayer center. I know it's a, we are talking about of, a lot of money, but Kivolonzia is a millionaire and a billionaire. So we will just tell Kivolonzi bring one billion and we finish this thing so that GCI can have somewhere where we can come. Come and spend a whole night. We can have a, yes, beautiful place where you don't fear. People are traveling all the way to Nakuru to pray. Others are going all the way, I don't know where. We can have our home. So that's my humble appeal, and we believe as God gives us enablement, he will help us have a prayer work place here. I know if you do, Joshua will never sleep in Kitengela. You, they will have to discuss with the Caroline, how many times do you want to sleep in my <laughs> Because Joshua loves prayer. And uh, Steve loves prayer. Kirungu lo loves prayer. And uh, so many people here love prayer. They only lack the facility. So we thank God for this vision. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless Pastor Simon, wherever he is, for this great vision. Please allow me to welcome our general overseer of Gospel Centers International. My friend for many, many, many years. A man I've worked with, a man I've looked at his character. A man who you cannot point at a figure hat. He is just a humble man. Doesn't want a lot of things. In fact, I'm even messing him by talking a lot about him. But he's a, just a good man, a very good man. He has developed us the way we are without a lot of issues, without a lot of maneuvers. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Charles Kinusu Mulema. <laughs> what a good man. Can we appreciate good friend here? <laughs> Reverend Katembo, let's give the Lord a big hand for him. Thank you, Pastor. Asante. Okay. I don't, I don't know how to, what to say after that introduction. Because Katembu knows I, I find it difficult to accept some things that are said about men of God. They say you are very humble, but there are people who know you are not humble. <laughs> Sometimes you need just to, to go to those who live with you, they'll know whether you are humble or not. <laughs> and they say you are very prayerful when they know you are not prayerful at all. So... For me, I want to say thank you for loving me and for giving me an opportunity to be here with you and uh, to join in this great occasion. You may be seated. Let me ask you to do so. And uh, I was introduced alone. Allow me to introduce my wife also. 
and then she will give me the blessing to preach the word of God very briefly to you. Uh, we came to celebrate. We did not just come to hear or just to meet one another. We came to celebrate, and there is nothing in celebration that is as good as when you've had it all, you eat something. So there is a meal for all of you. And uh, I will not really wish to take a long time sharing or speaking because this was a meeting to dedicate the facility to celebrate Pastor Simon and for us to share a meal together. And thank you for your patience. I will not take a long time. I had so many things to do to speak. Those of you who know me, when I take my mic, I can preach for two hours without any issue. And Pastor Katembo knows that. So I will assure you, I will not preach for a long time. I will only read. And after reading, we'll go and have our meal together. Mama Nelly, you can come. And as you come, please come and just, say, and just allow me to preach with your blessings. Allow me to say, as Mama Nelly comes, that uh, Bishop Kilioba, thank you, Daddy, for coming. We were told kuna vitu ingine, lakini wewe ni daddy sasa. Na mami hapa. I'm so humbled by your coming. If I knew you were coming, I would have not been holding this mic. I think Mercy must have hidden it from me deliberately because she knew if she tells me Bishop Kilioba is coming, I'll say he's going to preach. So listen to my sermon. It might not be the one, the, 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 a good sermon, but receive it. And thank you for coming with Mama to honor us. You are our father in this city. We have many pastors, many bishops. I'm very selective. My church knows I've been doing ministry for 35 years. I have allowed very few bishops to speak in my church, not because I don't like them, but because I know who, the ones who resonate with my spirit. And you are among the few that resonate with my spirit. And we say thank you for loving us. Apostle Kiange, you are a good man. Where is that man? This man almost saved, he just saved us the other day when we were coming here to the prayer center along Mombasa Road. We had an accident. We were just coming, I think it's two weeks back, to come and just look at the facility and uh, agree on a few things. And uh, the police were dilly-dallying us. And when this man spoke to the police, who were just his neighbors, the police uh, made things very easy for us. And Pastor Steve will tell you, he told the police, if you are not listening to me when Bishop speaks, you'll be fired from that place. <laughs> and the police just told him, Apostle, we've heard you. And things worked very fast for us to clear us from many things. We thank you, Bishop, Apostle, Apostle Kiange. And being a good friend of our church, I know how much you've, you've, you've served Utawala Church, and you are a great blessing to us, especially here. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming. And allow me to say again to Pastor Reverend Ross, thank you for coming to represent Bishop Kefa. Again, you've been part of this church, part of this ministry, and we say thank you for start, uh, just coming and leaving aside everything and making sure that you are here to make us feel that we are not one, we are many, and we are a family. My regards to Bishop, if he comes, I'll be happy to see him. If he doesn't, we praise the Lord. For all pastors, thank you for coming. We love you, we appreciate you, and thank you for being here, both from out, outside our church and those of GCI in our church. Would you just say something, and then you pray so that I can minister. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, once again, we, we thank God for this afternoon. Um, Pastor Masi and your family, we celebrate you. Um, we know that our friend, he was my friend. Yes, he was my friend. Uh, I used to discuss many things with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my life was very easy when my friend was alive. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But today we've come to celebrate my friend. We thank God for his life, and may he rest in peace until Jesus comes. So thank you so much, friends, for coming. You may sit, Pastor Massey. Thank you so much for coming. We love you, and we feel we are loved. For other ministries who are here, we celebrate you. Thank you so much, the apostle. Small body, but powerful. Thank you for coming. And um, Bishop, we want to tell you again we love you. Thank you. Blooms, where are you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's salute Bishop. Praise the Lord. We love you, Bishop. And so allow me to pray for the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We praise you. We exalt your holy name. Thank you for a day like this because you purpose that you shall gather us in this place as we come to celebrate a man of God, 
a man who transformed lives, a man who touched lives. Lord, we thank you because we are part of this journey of the prayer center at Chumbi. And Lord, we pray that you, you shall help us to be faithful, even in fulfilling the great commission in this region. My Father and my God, as the word comes to us this afternoon, we pray, Lord, that you shall bless us. Indeed, that as the man of God brings the word, I pray that you anoint him, O God, that you shall fill him afresh, O mighty Redeemer. We thank you for the word because we know our lives shall be transformed. Our lives shall be changed as we listen to your word. We exalt you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, my wife. Amen. Now... <clears throat> My family loves you all, my, and uh, my daughter came also, my, my big daughter. Joy, is she there? That's my daughter, she's, she's, uh, she's there. Did Vicky come? Okay, There's, I have three children, Joy, Vicky, and I have Austin. Austin is in college, he's in school right now, he's, in the, he's working, and uh, I appreciate them being here for, with us here. Now, if you have your Bible, which I believe you do, because this is a prayer place, and if you didn't come with your Bible, then you are in the wrong place. <laughs> All right? I want you to open the book of Psalms 56. And I will take a little time to share with you the reason why we are here. And the reason for the dedication of this great temple. I thought, that I was asking God, what shall I share? And I felt the only way that I can be useful to us is to encourage you for the reason why we are here. So that after we are done with this dedication, which we are already, we've already prayed, and we are done with our meals and wherever, you will understand why. And you will begin to do what you're supposed to do. Now, Isaiah 56 and verse 7, if you can open, this were the words of Isaiah talking about a place like this. Oh, what is that? I said Psalms. All right, it's Isaiah. Isaiah. I think my eyes were seeing something else. Isaiah 56 and verse 7. Isaiah 56 and verse 7. Sorry. Now, this word was also uh, spoken here by, I think it must have been either the children or they, 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 they spoke about it. Yeah, and I wondered, what is it? In the mouth of babes, the Bible says the Lord shall speak. So for chapter verse 56 and verse 7, this is what the Bible says. It says, this I will bring to my holy mountain. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. And for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Now this were the words of Isaiah. I don't know whether I'm moving too fast. The same words which Jesus spoke when he went to the temple to cleanse it. And he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Now, I just began reflecting, what was it that Isaiah or Jesus did when he was cleansing the temple? And what is it that Isaiah wanted us to know? In my view and in my opinion, the house of God was basically meant to be a place of prayer. Just that. The house of God was meant to be a place of prayer. I know we've, heard about, we've talked about Pastor Simon loving prayer, and many of us have uh, a testimony about his life, we know. One of the reasons why GCI, I believe, grew to where it is was because I had a man behind me who knew how to pray. I can tell you, for the years that I served under Pastor Simon, I mean, I served with Pastor Simon, Pastor Simon was never a burden to me. You know, there are people you work with and you feel some, you, you, it might not be a huge burden, but you feel resistance from many corners. Okay? But this man, from the moment when the Lord brought him into my life, the man took his role and the man became a pillar of prayer for our church, and I want to thank God for that. Now, if there is anything God desires, is that men may connect with him. That's the desire of God, that men may connect with him. And I want to bring this very quickly to something which God told Moses to do. I'm paraphrasing my sermon here. He told Moses when they were leaving Israel, I mean Egypt, going to the place of uh, uh, the land of Canaan, somehow when they had reached in the wilderness somewhere, God told Moses to tell the people to come together and build a sanctuary for him, a place where he would meet and commune with them. And you will find this scripture in the book of Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8. He said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in their midst. So God didn't want just to be with the people anywhere or everywhere. And I want to let you know something here. God is not with the people everywhere and in every place. You know, there are people who believe I can pray in my house and God will hear me in my house. Yes, he will hear you in your house. 
And he, cannot, he can only do so if you have no option. But God wanted his people to be in a place where he would connect with them, fellowship with them, commune with them, and have some moments together with them. So he told, instructed Moses and he told him, build me a tabernacle that Israel may have a center place of worship. Now, many of us began to ask ourselves, what was this tabernacle all about? And I came to discover that in the old covenant, God made Moses, uh, 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 made Moses, through, uh, uh, Moses with the children of Israel. He wanted to live in their midst, to walk in their midst, and to connect with them, and to serve together with them. The tabernacle was a place where God would come to be with his people so that he can be able to commune with them and share together with them. Now, I always tell the church when I'm talking about the Old, the, the Old Testament, it is simply a reflection of, of what the New Testament should look like. In fact, the Old Testament is a type of the New Testament. The tabernacle in the Old Testament today is the church of Jesus Christ that we see in our midst at this particular moment. This was a place that God would come and fellowship with his people. No wonder Jesus says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So when we look at the tabernacle, we are seeing what would have been, what would be the church of Jesus Christ in the days that we are living in. But let me forget about many things about that. There were three, th there were three rooms that were in the tabernacle. Three very important places that, com that, that composed of that tabernacle. Three areas. One, we had a place we called the outer court. The outer court. Number two, we had a place we called the inner or the holy place. The inner court or the holy place. Maybe I could use the word the holy place. Then there was a place in the tabernacle that was called the holy of holies. I'm sure those of us who have studied the tabernacle of Moses or the tabernacle of David, you realize those were the things God told Moses, the way, the way God told Moses to construct that tabernacle. Now the whole of Israel worshipped the Lord in those three places. The three places. The outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. Now, if I had a picture here, I would have shown you the picture which God gave Moses when he told him, build me a tabernacle. And I want to believe it is the desire of the Lord or the desire of God that we also have a, a worship or we have a place of worship or we have a kind of worship, not place, a kind of worship that would agree with those three things that God wanted Moses to do for them. Now, the sole purpose of that tabernacle was, again, as I said, for God to commune with his people. To commune with his people. It had three places that were very, very important. The tabernacle was a, build, a, 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 a kind of a tent that had a wall around it. Okay? Which Israel would, call, I mean, would, would carry with them all the way in the wilderness until at a later stage it was transformed into the great temple that Solomon built or which David desired to build for God. Now, I will quickly go to the three places that was part of that tabernacle. The first place, as I said, was the outer court. The second place was the holy place. The third place was the holy of holies. Holy of holies. Now, God is calling Moses, Exodus chapter 25, to build that tabernacle for him. And he's giving Moses a design for that tabernacle. I just follow with me. Moses a design for that tabernacle. How does God begin to explain to Moses how that tabernacle will be built or how it will look like. Those of us who read the Bible, you will discover after making an appeal and telling Moses, tell the people to build me a place where I will commune with them. The first thing that God began to tell Moses to do, or began speaking about, or the first item that God began talking about was the item that was actually kept in the most holy place in the Holy of Holies. Before he began telling him the measurements will be like this. Before telling him this is the way the inner court will look like. Before telling him this is the way the outer court will look like. God went straight to the center of where his heart actually was. And get me right on this. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 10. It says God spoke to Moses and he said, They shall make what the Bible calls here the ark of acacia wood. This is what I'm calling here the ark of the covenant. There was a very special instrument in that house that was called the Ark of the Covenant. And God began by talking about the Ark of the Covenant, even before telling Moses, this, this thing will be from this corner, to, or, or the length of this thing will be this much, or the, 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 the description of this building will be in this manner. So he began with the first item 
And the first item which God mentioned, before he even gave him the full picture of how that tabernacle was going to look like, he began with the Ark of the Covenant. I hope you're listening to me. The Ark of the Covenant. To signify to me that this first item was where the heart of God was. Where the heart of God was. And hear me right. The heart, uh, Bishop Kefa, welcome brother. God bless you for coming. The heart of God was in the innermost place. What, where we call us the holy of holies. I'm, I want to imagine. I want to build a house. Or maybe somebody has called you as an architect to build a house for him. I'm sure the first thing you will want to see will be the designs of that house. Let me bring you closer. The designs of that house. The, the house will be 10, I mean, 10 feet by 10 feet. The rooms will look like this. Okay? You will want to know how will the roof look like. And then you will now go into the inside of the house, the furniture in the house. You will talk about the place where the beds will be, the place where the tables will be, the place probably where the, 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 the kitchen will be. But look at God when he's telling Moses to build the tabernacle. The first thing that God talks about, he begins by describing what the Bible calls as the, as the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. This was the reason, I mean, I mean the reason why God took, picked the Ark of the Covenant is because that is where the heart of God was. Where the heart of God was. And if you continue reading, when he talked about that Ark of the Covenant and he has finished talking about it, he ended by saying in chapter 25 and verse 22, and this one we must read, Exodus 25 and verse 22. He said, there I will meet with you from, uh, uh, and, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims that are on, that are on the Ark of the Testimony. And I love what he, if he says, I will speak with you about all that I will give you in commandment for the people of Israel. So God tells Moses, as you are building this thing, there will be something called the Ark of, uh, the, need the Ark of the Covenant there. And he says, this is the place where I will speak with you. And I believe all of us here, if there is anything we are looking for, is to hear the voice of God. It's for God to speak to us. Because worship... It's when God is speaking to his people. It is not when we are making noise and just talking and talking and talking. Worship is not in the words that we speak only. Worship is when we reach the place where God will speak to us and give us the commandments and the things that he wants us to do. I believe that is the reason why all of us come together. I came to realize that in the olden times, and this listen to me very carefully, people never assembled for the many funny interesting things. One of the girls stood here, the little, the little girl stood here, they talked about what confusion. In fact, today the church is more confused than you can imagine. In the days of the old, people never met for any reason but for only two reasons. Bishop Kilioba is a, a theologian, he can, he, 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 he can correct me here. There were two, only two reasons why people assembled. The re reason number one was to worship. And their worship was in nothing but in sacrifices that they were giving to God. And number two, they met together to pray. For God to, hear, for God to speak to them. And for them to commune with God. Those were the most important things that happened in the tabernacle. And I can, I can tell you this of a fact. If this was a tabernacle, we would not be sitting here singing songs. Believe me. We would have come, you enter through that gate. There is a ceremony in the outer court. There will be a ceremony in the inner court. And there will be another ceremony in the innermost court. That was all that it was in the worship of God during those particular times. I came to, risk, to discover the three different compartments that were in that tabernacle were simply to help us in the church today to understand what God expects of us as believers today on how we can be able to worship him in truth and in spirit. Now listen to me. There were three compartments. The first compartment, I want to repeat again, was the outer court. The second one was the holy place. And the third one was the Holy of Holies. Have you gotten that? Now let me explain. These three things expresses the three levels of us reaching, the, in, in reaching into the Holy of the Holies. The Holy of the Holies was the place where this thing I'm calling the Ark of the Covenant was, it was actually stationed. Where the Bible tells me God told Moses, at this thing... I will commune with you and I will talk, I will speak to you and give you my commandments that my people must hear. So three things that were very key here. 
And that's the reason why we are here today. We are here because we, we do not want to meet God outside. We want to meet God right into the holy of holies. You know, today prayer has become something which people think you can just touch God or meet God anyhow. It is not true. It is not the case. We must understand that God wants us to commune and communicate with him. He wants you to come to the place where he can be able to speak to you and also give you his commandments, the things that you must be able to do. So allow me in a few minutes to mention about the three levels of prayer that I can learn from this story of the tabernacle. Number one, we have what we call as the level of the common prayer. Common prayer. The level of the common prayer. And believe me, many believers today, we are in the level of common prayer. Today, people get born again, and they are only satisfied when they are laid hands on, and they are given a sinner's prayer, and that is the end. What am I calling the level of, uh, 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 in, in, in the level of the common level of prayer? This was the, 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 the place where people only entered into what we call as the courtyard, or the outer court, and their, their service ended there. I'll explain. The courtyard, or the outer court, outer court was a place we call as the common area. The common area. Where people could enter and worship the Lord. That place, as I said, had walls over seven and a half feet tall. Which means you could not be able to see inside that place unless you entered through the gate. So nobody was allowed to enter the tabernacle from any other corner but from a, a gate that was created there. Now listen to me. You are to enter through the gate and the moment you get into that place we are calling the, 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 the outer court, there were two things that you found there. There was what we call as the altar of the burnt offerings and also we had what we call here as the lever of water. There was an altar there. And then after the Madabahu, in front of the Madabahu, you would find there was there a liver, something like a pot that had water in it. And this place, everybody, every Israelite, every Israelite was, I mean, he was, he was supposed to enter into this place. To me, I'm calling it a place where everybody can go into and he can be able to worship the Lord in that place. Now into this courtyard, or courtyard, any one of Israel could bring his sacrifices and offer those sacrifices there. Before you move into the inside, the holy, the, the, the holy place, you are supposed to go with a sacrifice and offer it in that place, the, the, the outer court. And after you've given your sacrifice, you would go and wash in the lever. After washing the lever, you would go away and you would leave and go home. That was the end of you worshiping God if you are a common person. In the court that we are calling the outer court. And I want to submit to you. Many of us only reach the outer court and we cannot go beyond the outer court. A number of us are born again because the outer court represents the sacrifices that God has done for us. Instead of the lambs and the, and, and, and the goats that they were giving, they were giving there. Instead of the doves that they were bringing there, Jesus has died for us. And therefore, he has paid the price for all of us that we do not need to carry with us those lambs and carry with us those goats to bring into this place of worship. And we give God the glory because we can say, like somebody said here, my brother Momani said, we are all redeemed. So each one of us can come into the outer courts. You can come into those outer courts and receive your blessing and receive your salvation. You can come there and go away when you've been cleansed, your, been cleansed from your sins and, and, and baptized also in water by the baptism which, the, which Jesus Christ said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, this outer court, the purpose of the outer court, it was the place where forgiveness was also found. So anybody who came to the outer courts, he was forgiven. But the sad thing about it is that his worship ended in the outer court. After the outer court, you go away and you are done. Because you cannot go beyond the outer court. This moves me to what I'm calling us the second level of prayer. This was the place we call the middle level prayer. The place of the holy place. The place of the holy place. This place was only accessible by two kinds of people. The Levites and the priests. If you are not a Levite, and you are not a priest, you are not supposed to go beyond the outer court. I want to imagine, we are all seated here. Out of us who are seated here, there are a few of us, just a few of us. 
And this I want to demystify this question of saying, so it's only so and so who can pray. I'm demystifying that. Of course, we've talked about Pastor Simon. Apostle Kiange. We've talked about him. We've spoken about people who can really pray, like that teacher who was in which school? That uh, Makweni. And we classify prayer and we say, only these people can, uh, can, uh, can only pray. We look at some people, we say, these ones are gifted in prayer. I want to demystify that and tell you, you can go beyond the outer court. You can go beyond the outer court. And I will mention that as I finish. Now, this outer court was because these people, Israel, all the people of Israel, they had some limitations in their lives, which couldn't have allowed them to go beyond, beyond the outer court. They could only reach the outer court, and that was the end of their worship. The end of their worship. But beyond, into the inner court, if what I'm calling as the holy place, there were only two categories of people. We had the priests, and we had the, the sons of Levi, the Levites. And what was there in the inner court? The inner court had three things. I'll mention very quickly. The inner court had the table of the showbread. Number two, it had the altar of incense. And number three, it had the golden candlestick. Now listen to me. Anybody who doesn't want to go beyond the outer court, you only remain born again. You remain washed by the blood of Jesus. You remain there, you know, your prayer is limited to only being born again, washed by the blood of Jesus, baptized. You will see many believers today, when you meet them, they tell you, I'm born again and I, I am what? Baptized. And the story ends there. But when you want to go beyond, listen to me, when God gives you the ability and God gives you the will to go beyond the outer court, and hear me here right, to go beyond the outer court, you will find three things beyond the outer court. Number one, you'll find the table of the showbread. Number two, you will find the altar of incense. And number three, you will find the golden candlestick. I hope I'm not speaking French to the people here this morning. How can I explain? I wish I had my diagram here. Now, this is the tabernacle here, okay? Here is the gate. It is divided into three. Let me put it that way so that you get me. There was the, the outer court, which was very large, maybe from that corner up to here. And then there was a curtain that divided. You get into the holy place. After the holy place, another curtain that divided. Finally, you get into the holy of holies. Now, when men came to worship like you, tell your neighbor, I hope you're not one. <laughs> you would walk through the gate. You are hearing the gospel. You would walk through the gate, and the place that would land fast is the outer court. Everybody went through the outer court. But this outer court was limited. Listen to me, limited. You could only find two things, salvation and baptism. Salvation and what? Baptism. Don't be limited to salvation and baptism. You must go beyond salvation and baptism. And this was only if you were a Levite or you were a priest. And I'm going to qualify you by telling you, we are now the Levites and the priests in the kingdom, in this new kingdom that God has given to us. Now, when you moved into this inner court, there were three things that were there. There was a table. That table had bread on it. And there was a candlestick with, with seven sticks from one, you know, from one stand with light on them. And then there was what we are calling here the, 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 an altar of incense. Let me quickly just mention here. The table of the candle, I mean, in the table of the showbread was simply fellowship. Fellowship. It means you go beyond just being just a believer. You get into intimacy or fellowship with God. Am I talking to somebody? Fellowship with God. Number two, it's not only fellowship, there is illumination. Your eyes get opened. You begin reading the Bible and you begin understanding the Bible. Because there are people today who need the pastor literally every day to explain to them certain things. There are people who cannot even interpret a scripture in the Bible. We are brethren today who, who are still debating with the basics of the gospel. When I find a brother asking me, is it wrong to smoke? Or is it wrong to have a girlfriend. To me, I find you very basic. I find you actually in the outer court because you're only here. But let me tell you, if you understand the meaning of prayer, you will move into the inner court where you'll begin to understand the basics, even the things which you know, your eyes could not be able to see, you'll begin to see them. So there will be, number one, fellowship. Number two, there will be illumination. 
You'll begin to see things which you cannot be able to see. And then number three, you will begin to learn how to pray. Because the incense here represented prayer. Whenever you went and began to pray, it would go before the Lord like some incense before God. But this thing, actually the inner court was limited to you alone. Let me make mention to you here. When you walk into the gate, into the outer court, you simply put your offering there. You simply put, you, you will find a priest waiting for you. Actually, the ministry in the outer court is ministry to you by the priest. You simply walk in, the priest will pray for you. The priest will baptize you, and that is the end. But when you move into the inner court, you begin now having what you're calling as personal intimacy with God. You begin to learn how to fellowship with God. You begin to learn how to pray together. Then you begin how to, to learn how, what the word of God says about you. But there were very few people who were allowed into this inner court. There were only the priests and who? And the Levites. Meaning that God was now cutting off. Cutting off and reducing the number as they were going into the holy of holies. Now get me right. I'm almost to finish my message here. And I hope you, you're, you're catching what I'm talking about. The will of God for you is not for you to remain inside, outside, in, in the outer court. God wants you to move where? In the inner court. And not just the inner court, but go beyond the inner court into the holy of holies. Now, beyond the inner court, we have now what we are calling here the holy of the holies. And what I discovered in the holy of the holies? The holy of the holies, there was only one man who went there. And that one man was the high priest. The high priest. Ask your friend, do you want to remain in the outer court? Or do you want to go in the inner court? Or do you want to go into the holy of the holies? Please pray for, I mean, in, in the preach on my behalf. Ask your, your neighbor. And you will say, Pastor Mlema, no, no, I'm not a high priest. I'm not a high priest. But listen, the high priest went there for only one reason. One reason. And I wanted to get this right. The reason was the high priest went there to make intercession. To make intercession. Now listen, the, the place that is called the Holy of Holies had now this very special box that I began by talking to you. Whom God, which God spoke about to Moses when he was telling him, build me a tabernacle. Inside that holy of holies, there was only one item. And that item was this thing called the Ark of the Covenant. In, on this thing called the Ark of the Covenant, there was something on top of it, which was called the, the mercy seat. The mercy seat. Mercy, not you. The mercy seat. By the way, when you come here, you'll find mercy. If you come to here for prayer, mercy will be there. Thank God that the mercy seat was there. So there was a box. In that box, there was what we call as the mercy seat. There were two angels, or cherubims, the Bible calls them, with their wings, which were closing towards one another. Okay? To signify, to signify the mercies of God. And I can tell you, it was not only that it, there was a mercy seat, but inside the box, inside the box, you know, I, I've come to discover until you go into that, into that box, inside the box, you, you will never get anything. Inside the box. Tell your friend inside the box. There was something inside the box. In that box, there were three things. Again, listen to this. Number one, we had the rod of Aaron. Not the rod of Moses. The rod of Aaron. The second thing we had in the box was the Ten Commandments, the law. And then the third thing which was in the box was a pot of manna. Allow me just to summarize this, because time will not allow us, and I believe all of us now are wondering, Bishop Mulema is now talking a lot. Maybe you're wondering whether we'll have our lunch or not. Allow me just to summarize this. Those three things were the only things that God could give himself to any man who went beyond into the Holy of Holies. And there was only one man who went there. And his name was the high priest. There was only one high priest. I'm not talking about the priests, high priests. Now look, he has reduced us from many people to a few people, Levites and priests. From these few people to only one person. To signify the holiness of God. Now listen to me. And to tell you what it takes for you to go into the place where God himself will commune with you. This man was not nobody but Aaron until his son took over after the death of Aaron. Now, what did these three things signify? Number one, the three things they signified this. The law was to speak, the law that was in that box 
was to tell you when you reach the innermost place, the holy of holies, you will hear the voice of God. You didn't get, you will hear what? The voice of God. And how many of us want to hear the voice of God? I believe each one of us wants God to speak to us. The second thing was the rod of Aaron. It's, it signified the priesthood. The priesthood. And secondly, it signified intercession. Intercession. Why intercession? Because Aaron, when he went inside there, he didn't go to pray for himself. Now, I came to realize the, the, the word intercession, it means a prayer to God on behalf of another. Pleading on behalf of another. When you are interceding, you are not praying for yourself. Of course, Aaron prayed for himself and for the rest of the people. So intercession is when you pray for yourself and you pray for others. So Aaron would enter inside there and intercede on behalf of the all of the Israelites. Yeah. The sins that were forgiven at the altar here were part of the intercession. The, the, the fellowship you had inside there were part of the fellowship. I mean, part of the intercession. But ultimately, inside the Holy of Holies, that would be the climax. Where Aaron would take the blood and he would pour on that altar. I mean, on that uh, on the mercy seat. And he would plead forgiveness on your behalf. And God would look down and would forgive everybody. Because there is one man who has gone inside there to pray on behalf of the others. So that was number two. Number three, number three, we had what we are calling here the pot of manna. The pot of manna was to signify the provisions that God gives to his people. It means when we are doing our intercession, there are three things we are asking God for. Number one, we are asking God to speak to us. Number two, we are asking God, as we are praying, to intercede on behalf of the others. And number three, we are asking God to make provisions for us. That is the meaning of the word intercession. Now, Pastor Mlema, what is it that we, I can learn from this message? The lesson is very simple. God is telling us in this ministry here, we have been sitting in this place of the outer court for long. And if there is anything, maybe we have just moved into the place of the holies. Let me repeat again here. We have spent all our energies here in the outer court. Outer winning souls, people getting saved. You know, we are just happy outside here. God wants us to move into the inner court. Maybe we've been in the inner court long enough. God wants us to move into the innermost court so that we can be able to fulfill what Jesus fulfilled when he died on the cross for us. Amen. Why am I saying this? Because the Bible tells me in the new covenant, and I'm ending on that, in the new covenant, in the new covenant, not the old covenant, you know what Jesus did? Jesus allowed you, who is in the outer court, here, to walk through and to go up to Jesus allowed that. And I'm sure we know when he was dying on the cross, what happened in the temple? Help me, what happened in the temple? The Bible tells me there was a, there was a curtain in the temple. That curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. And the Bible tells me it was completely open to signify that you as a believer, you can walk from outside the gate and walk into the Help me, from where the first place is where? The outer court and walk where? And then you go where? Into the innermost. That is the position that we are today. And I want to challenge every believer who is here today. Don't limit yourself in the outer court. Can I, can I explain who is the one in the outer court? You have no time to seek God and touch God and have God speak to you. A prayer center, I'm imagining if you came to a prayer center for a day, what will you be praying for? For a whole day. Pastor Kiange, don't give an answer. What will you be praying for a whole day? A whole day, okay, two days, five days, what will you be praying for? Will you be praying for your needs? Whom will you be praying for? For others. Simply to tell me, if I have my own small problems, I can finish them in the... The middle one, upper katikati. When I'm fellowshipping with God and I'm making intercession, I'm praying, you know, I can finish my problems here. But when I want now to move to the place where 
I want to hear God speak to me. I must proceed from the outer court, from the inner court to the in, the most important place, the, the the holy of holies. And this is the reason for this prayer center. That's the reason why we are putting this prayer center here. So that you can come here and spend a whole day not praying for bread. Bread was found where? <laughs> Please help me here. Where was bread found? When, when you walked in the outer court, there was first the, the, there was first the, the altar. Uka tubu dambi, uka ukoka. Uka batizo kwa mkristo. Many believers are there. The lava was there. They don't go beyond that. This is why you, you realize in our churches, when we call prayer meeting, Pastor Joyce, how many people come for prayer meetings? Very few. I, we, our church is 3,000. But you know how many come for prayer meetings? Not more than 100. On Tuesdays. I don't know about yours. Maybe yours is better. Do you know where they are? Just in the outer court here. By the way, the church, the old church wasn't singing. There was no singing in the tabernacle. Tell your friend there was no singing in the tabernacle. You show me where Moses told Aaron, can you begin a song? In the there was no singing in the tabernacle. Actually, when they arrived in the tabernacle, the first thing is you see what? You, you just see the... But you are carrying, you are carrying thing. You you will never walk there. By, by the way, there was a rule that said, "Don't enter the house of God without what a sacrifice." So you would be carrying something, and the moment you enter there, you go and lay it on the altar. After putting it on the altar, the priest, the whoever it is, would help slaughter it for you. It would be burnt so that your sins are forgiven. Then you wash your hands and you go home. You are done. But look at the priests and the Levites. They would go beyond because they were closely related with God. There was a relationship that was holier than these other men outside here. They were sanctified for that work. And they were blessed for that work. Bishop, I realized this is why the high priest never lacked anything. Pastor Kefa, can we now preach prosperity a little bit here? <laughs> That's why the high priest. The high priest never lacked anything. By the way, the best of the animal, the animal meat, was given to who? <laughs> to his Aaron and his sons. Okay, shinja ngombe, unatafta hila ambayo ina mafuta mzuri. Iyo ndo, Bishop Mulema, na watoto wake, akina joy, tunakula. Because there was provision there. You didn't need to do anything. As long as you are there, you will see three things there. There will be, pro, there will be bread which is manna. By the way, this bread which was here wasn't manna. The, the one in the middle there, the one you found here, the fellowship bread here, this wasn't manna. This was ordinary bread, which they were putting on the table every time. Okay? But when you went inside, there was the hidden, it is called the hidden manna. And I can tell you, brethren, when you go into the Holy of Holies, you begin to eat what we call as hidden what? Manna. You don't eat the ordinary bread which people are, are eating in the, in the normal church. That's why you find people who are always inside there, they can be described there. We've been describing Pastor Simon here. You tell me, when you die, will there be a memorial like this for you? Ask your neighbor who will remember you. In fact, some of you will be forgotten the same day we bury you. We'll say bye-bye and we shall leave you. But when you get into the place where you can be remembered, it means there is something tangible about you which nobody else can be able to talk about. So the Old Testament made more, I mean, the Old Testament, it actually allowed people to do only two things, to worship, and number two, to sacrifice and pray. But in the New Testament today, we have changed so many, by the way, those who don't know, oh, music was introduced by David. I mean, you can put off that thing. Introduced by David in the temple. Before, before David, there was no music in the temple. I've been sometimes asking myself, I never hear, I've been passing near mosques, I've never heard the, 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 the Muslims sing, singing. Have you ever heard them? Sing me one, 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 one Muslim song. Can somebody sing? Please help me, help me here. No, no, not the song of Akbar, I'm talking about a song, a proper a, a song. Like the ones that Tony was leading here and telling us, let's clap. Have you heard the Muslims doing that? Why? Ask yourself. Let's move further. Hindus. Which song? We were in India, all of us, for, for almost some five years, some ten years. Sing me a Hindu song. Which you heard Hindus singing? Any? Any? 
But what, but do they don't, don't they have temples? Don't they have places of worship? What do they do? What do they do when they arrive there? The first thing you see those fellows coming, especially the Indians, they they, they, they are burning incense. They are carrying offerings. And when they go inside there, we don't even know how they commune. They have got their own small altars, their own acts, where they will go there and begin. But look at the believers. Today when we come to church, what is our emphasis today? Like now, listen, now even my sermon, you're not listening. But when they were singing here, I think some of you were very, you're even judging me. Some of you will say how Pastor Mlema was finding it hard to preach. But listen, when these ones who are singing here, Kinatoni and company, so you are enjoying the songs. You are enjoying them. And we think that is the worship. That was not the worship in the olden times. These things were only introduced to back up two things. Sacrifice and prayer. Amen. Sacrifice and prayer. Amen. And believe me, when we fall short of the two, sacrifice and prayer. Believe me, it doesn't matter. When I talk about sacrifice here, I'm not talking about 310 or these things which are happening. When you come and offer yourself as a sacrifice, and you offer also what God has given to you without reservation. And you say, I am giving it to God. I am surrendering it to God. And then you get into the place of intimate prayer. I want to tell you, you will hear God speak to you. Amen. You will hear God speak to you. So Jesus, during his death, we all know, the Lord opened the Holy of Holies. Right. The curtain was a, to signify that every believer, every believer, you and your brother who is next to you, you and your wife, you and your sister, you have access now into the Holy of Holies. You can go there and begin to talk to the Father. And listen, prayer is not a prayer if it's only you who is talking. It is only prayer when God also talks to you. I'm making an appeal. Let this not be a ceremony that is ending here today. The reason why I chose to speak those words, I, want, I wanted to paint a picture in your mind that... Prayer or worship wasn't just an event. It was a lifestyle of those that lived in those days. It was not a thing which you would do on a day and you are done. Oh, we dedicated DGO Center. And then we'll now wait to come here when we have put up structures there, standing for us to do another dedication. We must make this place our lifestyle. Our life. And this will not happen when you are in the outer court. Let me now... Do my final submissions. The outer court was where everybody meets. I'm finishing. The outer court was where everybody does what? You're not getting me. The outer court was where what? Every Israelite went to the outer court. Every Israelite. Every Israelite. To me, the outer court is your Sunday service. Tell your neighbor, that is not where God is. I know you will begin wondering what Bishop Lema is saying. By the way, in, in, in our Sunday service, that is, we are in the outer court. We are only luring people to come to the, to the altar, the present altar. We are luring them to make commitment. So where everybody meets, that's the outer court. Where everybody is, where anybody can come and do anything he wants. Where is that small girl? The one who was saying here, he said something here. In the, old, in the olden days, but in the new days, that's where there is what? Confusion. In the outer court. Because Mangombe is naingia zikitoka. Mangombe, Mambuzi is naingia zikitoka. Here in the outer court. Ona, ona, wajama wana kuja, kuja pale, wana kuja nafana vituko pale, as long as you brought your car, wana toka. But listen, the inner court, it was not meant for everybody. And you must now decide, I'm going to move from the, older, the outer court into the inner court. I'm choosing today to make up my mind that I will now go beyond the outer court. And there are very few people here. That outer court is our prayer meetings on Tuesday, our Bible studies on Thursday, because there is prayer, there is bread, and there is what? Help me. I said three things. Illumination. There is illumination. I said what? There is fellowship, and there is what? Uh, uh, yeah, and there is? And learning how to pray. That is now the things which bring us together. When a believer goes beyond just being in the Sunday service believer, and you, you choose now to begin going to the place where you can be able to fellowship, you can be able to read the Bible, you can be able to study the Word of God, you can pray together. Our Bible studies on Tuesday, our prayer meetings on Thursday, our, our home cells on, uh, during the week. That is now the inner court. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, do you belong to any? I know all of us here, whichever church we come from, we have those programs. 
Am I saying the truth? You can find your place there, and that is the place God wants to move us next to, where you can hold a hand of your brother, and you can pray with, with him there and fellowship with him. But when you, are, when you are done with that, this is now where NGC, Reverend Simon, prayer center comes in. You must now move away from just the fellowship of the, of the day and say, now I'm going where I am, alone. When I am, alone. The innermost, the Holy of Holies, there were no, it was not a place for two people. It was a place where you went in alone. And I want to believe when you come to prayer here, you're not coming here with your wife or with your husband to come and sleep. Or you are coming here with your children to come and have dinner. This will be a place where you come into the presence of God and you begin to tap into the hidden manner. Tap into the hidden manner. You begin to go into the place where there is the... There were three things. Can I see if you, you followed me? There was the hidden manner and there was what? The road of... Aaron, where you now begin to intercede on behalf of the others. You begin to pray prayers which nobody else can pray. The prayers that Jesus prayed when he was alone, where the Bible says he prayed until, the scripture tells me, he began to sweat until it was like what? Blood. You begin to speak in languages which nobody can be able to understand. Because you are right into the presence of God, and you are there alone. And finally, when you are in that place, you begin now to connect with the provisions that God has given to us. Me, I want to believe God answers prayer not inside here. Actually, he doesn't answer here. He, does, he doesn't answer here. Here is assurance. But when you move inside here, he shows you the evidence inside here. You begin to get answers to your prayer. He begins displaying his provisions to you. And he begins saying, look, he, he prayed for this. I am now giving it to him. He has trusted God for a husband. God is, is giving him a You know, there are people here who need intercession for many areas. Some of us need intercession for money. Some of us need intercession for husbands. Some for wives. Some for, I mean, uh, for promotions. They will not be found here in the outer court. They will be found where? When we get into the Holy of Holies. I want to stop by saying here. The reason for this prayer center, we want to give an opportunity for each one of our church members to go beyond the church service on Sunday, to go beyond the, 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 the organized prayer meetings we have that we fellowship together with, so that we can go into the place where we can be alone with God. Would you be willing to do that? Would you be willing to do that? Pastor, Pastor Massey said here, he, he said it's a small room. This is not a small room. This is a very big room. And I can tell you this room is not full. During the week, this room will not be full. We'll be asking you to come and pray. And number two, as we ask you to come and pray, the Lord has given us a vision. We are going to put up a prayer center here like none other. Yes. Are you purposefully making that clap? Yes. I'm saying like what? None other. You, I, I know I'm your geo. Do you trust me? Yes. How, many, how many believe in me? How many believe when I say something, it happens? Yes. Bishop, we have learned in our church, we don't wait until we see. We do it. Last year, it was a dream here. I came, I walked here, we prayed here, we walked here. I planted a tree. Is my tree still there? Somewhere. And it was a dream. Today is a reality. Everything God has done in our church, has, it has not happened because we had. It happened because we stepped in. And we've seen God do it and do it and do it. And I'm telling you, this small room here is a seed that was planted. I told the Machakos County, you plant a seed. And when we gather, we shall inaugurate our plan. And believe me, we are on the drawing desk. We are putting up a beautiful architectural drawing of a modern prayer center. I hope the neighbors are not listening. If you look behind their, their, their pieces of land, if you see that side, you see this side. You see this side? We are trusting God. Yes. I hope you understand. We are trusting what? And if you are a neighbor, please help us. Help us. We are going to have a prayer center here that will surprise Nairobi. Yes. Bishop Kefa, do you believe me? That's why you came. He, he, he knows me. 
I may, not be, I may not be very good at many things, but I'm very good at planning and building. That one, you can't beat me. And I can tell you, if Jesus tarries, we are going to have a beautiful... This, this why, Mercy, that name you wrote there was Reverend Simon Marcia Prayer Center. We are adding there NGC, GCI, Simon Marcia Prayer Center. And, I, and I'm saying that for a reason. These people you see here are now taking ownership of this project from Machakos County. Now, if you believe in prayer, because when, when we meet again, I'll be doing what Moses did. God told, told Moses, tell them to give me an offering that, that I, you may build me a sanctuary. And it didn't begin, as I told you, I'm repeating myself, but I'm ending. I'm ending now. Can somebody say bishop has ended? <laughs> All right. But listen. You go, go and study. I may not have been articulate in explaining what I've explained here, but I've just given you a framework of something which can excite you to go and study. Go and study the preparation of the building of the tabernacle. Go and study. You will see when he told him, this is the way you will do it. He didn't begin by telling him it will be this long, that long. He began by saying, by saying the ark of the covenant will be like this. He began by an item inside the tabernacle, even before talking about the length, the breadth, and everything else. Then he began by telling, this is where I will meet you and discuss with you and share with you. That's why, Pastor Katembo, I am in agreement with you. We can stop every other thing. We put an ark there. I don't think, I don't think you are here. Some people are feeling bad because they say, the sheepfold should come to my house first. No, no, I'm saying this. Listen, I'm saying, even as we think of sheepfolds, those who don't know my language, those who don't come from GCI, Bishop Kiloba, sheepfolds are churches we are building. Right now, I'm doing one in Kitui. It's almost complete. In three months, it will be complete. And the next one is Kakamega. In a year, it will be complete. That's what we are doing. We can put aside that and consider the ark. The ark. Because what we are building is where? Where are we? What are we building? You didn't get my revelation, huh? What we are building is where? It's the outer court. Where we are saying, let them come. Let them come. Let them come. Let them come. It's the outer court. But we want to move people from where? The outer court to where? Here. To the Holy of Holies. And this will not be... By the way, listen. In fact, the reason why people don't go for prayer is what Katembu said. Me, I don't like those prayer, prayer places. I hate them. They don't look good. Terrible. Some of them, you go there and you, you come back when you have Homer. I know you're not quiet. The reason is simple. We make the outer court better than what? You didn't get me. When I use the word hate them, I'm not saying I hate them. HC, you know. I'm saying I don't like the way they look where? There. This one here is beautiful. Carpet. Sits like this. That's why the Lord spoke to me and told me to donate 50 chairs of this kind. And I have given them. They are inside here. 50. So when you come to pray, you sit and you feel good behind here. There are 50 of these. They are inside there. And each of these chairs is not, is not less than 10,000 shillings. They are inside there. I've done so because I cannot be sitting in the outer court. I'm sitting nicely there. Then when people come to the inner court, wana umia matako. Wana anguka. Now, you go and study the tabernacle. The, the instruments which were here, sorry for me using that word, it's just true. It's <laughs> The instruments which were here, by the way, go and study. I've done my study. I, did, I just take my iPad, I study, study, study. The things which were here, the value of what was here, kept appreciating as you go inside. These ones here were raw. They were raw. That's why they were bronze. When you went to the inner one, they were coated with gold. Coated with gold. But when you went inside here, they were what? Pure gold. 
So which, where, where should we have the best? Uku? Ni wapi, ni Are you getting my sermon? Yes. Are you in agreement with me? Yes. So if I ask you to give me an offering to take there, will you give me? Yes. Are you still thinking? No. You go study. Moses was told, he's a hapa, raw. Just like those cathedrals we have, uh, bishops, we should not make them better than the place of prayer. Yes. By the way, this one here, anybody could touch. You could anybody. This way here, you find some fellows on the pulpit. They have just, they have just had fornication yesterday, but they are in the pulpit. Now, when come and Ishida, as long as he can play the guitar, you, you, you feel so happy. But let me tell you, go and take the guitar inside, the inside here. But you know, inside here, by the way, the priest who went inside there, he had bells on the hem of his, on the hem of his, on under chain. You went in, people are watching. They want to know whether this man is okay or not. The moment you walked in, inside there, the, ch the, the chain would remain outside. So that in the event you don't come out, they will pull you out. Because nobody can even go there to pick you. <laughs> and when you are doing your services, you are, you are doing like this. You should keep on doing like this. So that the bells can keep on ringing. So that people can know you are alive. If you just happen to keep quiet, they will begin pulling you out of that place. You know, the level of here and the level of here is not the same. So if you are expecting God to minister to you, don't remain here. As long as you are getting money here and you are, you know, here you just be, some of you, you are stuck inside here because, because there is always bread. Kefa is preaching, so and so is preaching, the apostle is coming, uh, Kinusu is coming. So you just keep on changing bread and eating bread. This is just ordinary bread. But when you go inside here, I told you there is what? What is inside there? Not just manna, but what? Hidden manna. So I'm just telling you, we, 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 we've been here long enough. Yeah, and we've just, some of us, we've been enjoying inside here. But now is the time. And our time has started. Right inside here. Now, pastors from GCI mobilize prayer groups. Pastor Masi, it will not benefit you to have that, that plaque written there, dedicated. And nothing is happening here. We must tell people we are moving from here and we are going where? There. And for those who are from Nairobi, you may sit, Pastor Masi. For those who are from Nairobi, we will build you dormitories. And good ones. Nakio, unajangalia subuhi kiamuka. And hot water system. No, we must make it look like heaven. A place where when people walk in, Are you getting what I'm talking about? And if you don't know this, the Levites, the job of the Levites was nothing but to make sure those things are, function, are functioning. Functioning. Clean up the place. Make sure that the place is neat, clean. Here, down here, I could touch him to clean. May God help us. We are committed. Are we committed? Yes. How many of you are committed? God bless you. Whether you are from GCR or not, you are we are going to get committed. We will come up with a plan. And when I come up with that plan, I will put up a hammer three times bigger than this. Because I believe you will, you will, all of us will come with somebody. And we will raise our first money, and we shall start putting up our prayer center proper. Amen. Are we together with that? And number two, number second, this will be committed to nothing but prayer. Amen. Prayer. Amen. Prayer. Amen. Prayer. Of course, we have a sanctuary here. And that's the third thing I wanted to say. It cannot remain empty on Sunday. We will allow the people in this community to use that place for worship on Sunday. Amen. For worship on Sunday. With a view of putting up a proper sanctuary. Because now Chumvi cannot just be a place of prayer. Chumvi, now the, the Lord has visited Chumvi. Amen. People are going to get saved here. Amen. Pastor Mas, you are retired. You now have an opportunity for you to continue the legacy of your husband. Amen. You can now serve as a minister here and serve the Lord. Amen. All other details will follow. But from now, I bless you to continue with the church here, to continue with the prayers here, 
and we believe that God will use you to be a, a testimony in this city of Chongi. Thank you for listening to me. I may not have been very, very clear in what I've said, but I believe the Holy Ghost will help you. Go and read. Go and read Exodus 25 all the way to 29 or 30, to 31 or 32. You will see the big picture that I've been trying to paint to you here. Thank you for being a blessing. Can we stand up in prayer and we close? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your hands and give God praise. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you for this prayer center, Lord. We believe this is the beginning. The Bible says, though the beginning be small, the end thereof, thereof shall be great. We may appear like, Lord, we are just starting. But we believe, Lord, the end will be much greater than what we can think or even imagine. Your people have been here from 11 o'clock, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now we are on 16. For good hours, Father, we've been sitting and fellowshipping with one another. I pray, dear Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you will help us to understand the essence of this prayer center. To understand, Lord, the heart of God concerning his people. You will give us, Lord Jesus, the action to know that, Father, this is not just another place of gathering. But this is the house of God, the house of prayer for all people. Thank you for loving us and thank you for blessing us. Thank you for the privilege, the opportunity that, Lord, you've granted us to dedicate this house to the glory of your name. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, each one of these men and women that is here will make a commitment, Father. A commitment, Jesus, to love you and to serve you and, Father, to live for you. And most important, Father, move us from the outer court, Lord. Take us into the inner place, Father. Take us beyond into the Holy of Holies. That we may learn that you've called us, Father, to fellowship with you. You've called us, Lord, to hear your voice. You've called us, Father, to fellowship with your spirit. Lord, you've called us, Lord, to intercede on behalf of others. Because the Bible says, Father, you have made us kings and priests. And therefore, each one of us, Lord Jesus, is a priest unto you. I pray today, Father, open our eyes. Open our ears. Open our inner spirits that, Father, we may learn the essence and the importance of prayer. That, Father, we will not just be hanging around, but we shall be those who shall be closed in, in the area of prayer. We thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you for loving, loving us, Father, GCI. Loving us, Lord, your people that are here. Loving us, Lord, the churches that are presented here today. Loving us, the body of Christ. Because when you died on the cross, Lord, you died for all of us. You died for your church. You died for your people. You died for, etern- you died for us to have eternity. And Father, we come together as the holy people of God, as the new Jerusalem, my Father, as those who are destined for heaven. And we say thank you for loving us. And thank you, Father, for blessing us. We give you praise. And we give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Are you Lord we give you praise. God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Worthy Hallelujah. Is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. You are holy. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You Hallelujah. Chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. And this is the, the takeaway for you. Take it, take it, receive it. Hebrews 14, chapter 4, verse 14. May the Lord give you this word. May you go with it. It says, Since we have such a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we, our confession, for, he, for heavens, I mean, for, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to symbolize with our weaknesses, but one who was in every respect has been tempted like we are, yet without sin. The word is, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, the city of mercy, that we may receive mercy and obtain grace in times 
of need. Jesus, our forerunner, has opened the door for us. Let's walk into it and enjoy the same benefit that he has given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I think I'm done. I'm done. Come. You Amen. are holy. 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 Lord God. What is a lamb? What is a lamb? What is a lamb? to by the authority given to me to declare the GCI Reverend Simon Moasia Prayer Center officially dedicated and officially open <laughs> our guests. God bless our visitors. God bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once more, another round of applause to our bishop. Amen. Please be seated for a minute. We are so grateful to God. We are so blessed. Gio, that was wonderful. Thank you for opening our eyes. Indeed, now we know why we ought to becoming personal encounter with God. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, we will do three brief things from now, then we will be done. One, we will receive a message of um, uh, uh, appreciation or vote of thanks. Uh, we shall also do um, prayer, final prayer. Then we shall do, we shall cut a cake, just the cake alone, and then the rest will be done. I want to ask Peter to come back again. Uh, Willie, so, sorry, is Pastor Willie Kimonyo. Let's give him, give him a hand. Praise the Lord. Geo, we are so blessed. May God bless you so much for opening our eyes. And as a family, we are so grateful that you find time to come together with the DGO and the GEC and all the pastors from the GCI. May God bless you so much. Of course, uh, our dad, Bishop Moffat, and your, and your flower. May God bless you so much. We thank God. We thank God for you. Thank you so much for finding time to be with us. As a family, we are so grateful for your coming. I believe your word, Bishop, because on 4th of September 1999, yeah, you declared me husband, and until today I'm still a husband. <laughs> when I speaks, things happen, and I believe that I can see a big prayer sent in this place for the glory of the Lord. Maybe just to assure you, that the family of Reverend Moasia is working with you in this journey. Thank you so much. Allow me to appreciate um, Bishop Malomba has left us, but allow me to appreciate him. Bishop Kefa, thank you so much. You know, you are dad, you are a member of this family with your, with your flower rose here. We love you and we really appreciate you. May God bless you so much. In a very special way, I remember on 28th of November, 2022, that's the day when we broke this ground, and the Apostle Kanga was very gracious to be with us on that day. May God bless you so much. Feel appreciated. I want us to appreciate uh, Reverend Musila, together with the Machakos County, for standing with his work, actually owning this work and going, to, uh, going forward just to be, just to supervise this work. You've been a project manager in many ways. I remember when we were, when we were backfilling this church, we burned the midnight oil here with our cars and everything. May God bless you so much. 
not forgetting, uh, of course, Deacon Maswili, who has been leading an army of, uh, of workers in this place. May God bless you so much, and may God do you good. GCI churches, for their support, we want to thank you. Family and friends giving to us this project, we want to um, appreciate you. Of course, our neighbors, Krem, Krem Center, they have been there facilitating us with tents. I think when you go up there, you see a tent, cut us off. Let us just laugh for, this, for these neighbors of ours. May God bless you. It's good to have good neighbors. And of course, other neighbors, like the ISC Ngomano here, and other neighbors who have been very gracious to accept us and also to, to work with us. May God bless you so much. Machakos County Government, we want to appreciate you. Of course, our Paul, uh, Paul Muticia was here, our brother Paul Muticia. Pastor Dennis, thank you so much. We've met here more than many times. I've seen you here uh, together with, uh, with Paul and the entire uh, county government of Machakos. Please receive our appreciation. May God bless you so much. Uh, actually, the community is benefiting so much because of the grace that is upon the GCI. The first time we made the road is during the funeral of, of, of uh, DGO. The second time we're repairing the road, it is this time around. And we thank God for that because the Lord is doing it for his own glory. So I may not mention everybody by name, but feel appreciated. Feel appreciated. All of you for coming and turning up in big numbers, feel appreciated. May God bless you so much. Allow me just to mention one thing, uh, 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 Gio. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 30, I read this verse last night, and it really touched my heart. God was looking for somebody to repair the wall and to stand in the gap. And it says there, were, there was none. There was none. I think we have so many pastors. We have so many evangelists. We have few prophets. We have very many people with big names. But there are very few people who are wishing to move from, from the outer court to the, to the holy of the holies. Because there is a sacrifice to change those levels. You don't just walk like you're walking to the market. It takes a sacrifice, a decision to move from one point to another point. May God help us even as we, as we digest that message that will be given today. Be purpose, with purpose in your hearts to move from there to here. Hallelujah. May God bless you so much. As you go home, feel appreciated. I may not have mentioned everybody by name. May God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Willie Kimonyo. I want us to put our hands together to welcome another father that we have in the house. We really appreciate you, Bishop Kefa Omae. You are a blessing to the body of Christ. You are a blessing to us. And we know very well that you are a very good, close friend to our GEO. So we want to allow you to come, say say something and lead us to final prayers before we cut the cake because after the cake we'll just uh, go for lunch so please carry busana thank you so much man of god i don't want to say much we agreed with my wife she has to be the she has to be here early in the morning because yesterday I was doing a burial in Meru. And this morning we had our local church council meeting. I made a commitment that I'll come. Why? Because I'm part of GCI. Number two, Bishop Kilioba and Mama. If you don't know, this is my sister from another mother. And when you talk about the servant of God, Reverend Mwasia. He was my twin brother from another mother. Like Willie has said, I'm part of this family. The rest later. Thank you so much, man of God, our bishop and mama for the love that you have and the compassion. And much more so, being spiritual parents the way you are. Walking with the sons and daughters that God has given you. Including those of us that are serving the Lord elsewhere. May the Lord bless you. Allow me to pray. Shall we stand? Let's pray. Our loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you for this vision 
that is becoming so clear. Lord, we thank you for the great plans that you have. Not only for Jumfi area, but Lord, out of this place, nations will be impacted. Amen. That from this place, revival will gush and break out to the regions beyond. Amen. Father, though the vision may have seemed to be small, we see the end of it becoming greater. And your word reminds us that the glory of the later house shall be greater than the former. That's what we are seeing, oh Lord. And we thank you, even for the burden that you laid in the heart of your servant. We thank you, Father God, for our bishop, together with Gek and GCI, and all the associates, oh God, and all the brethren that have picked up this burden and running with it. I pray that the words that we have heard through your servant, as we come, as we, as we dedicate this uh, sanctuary this afternoon, I want to pray that somebody will meet God. Amen. Amen. That you will meet God in a personal way. That I don't even have to go and look for somebody to pray for me. That I will lay my hands on myself and I'll be healed. I'll receive my blessing. Praise the Lord. So we want to get this cake. And mercy, we want to say again, we love you. We love your family. And the... The, the ministry has officially begun in this place. And we release you to serve the Lord at Chumbi. But don't forget home. Because we'll still need you in Central Church. Amen. So we're going to cut the cake. And I pray that even as we, we celebrate with the cake, that there'll be a visitation in your life. Praise the Lord. So I'll, I'll cut the cake with mercy. I'll cut the cake with mercy. And we will give it to the fathers. Amen. Because we know where our blessing comes from. Praise God. Yeah. So this cake we are cutting and it will remain in Chumbi. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it will remain in Chumbi after the fathers, are, the fathers and the mothers. Many times we talk about the fathers and we forget the mothers. Amen. So we'll cut the cake, we'll have the fathers enjoy the cake, the rest will have the pre as we walk outside. Amen. Please cheer us as we cut this cake for the glory of God. <laughs> glory to God. Rose Joseph, Rose Joseph, you can come. Queen Katem.
can we be, all be upstanding to say the final prayer? From myself, I want to thank you very much for being a very good audience, very good uh, team. And I also want to thank our general overseer for allowing us to conduct this, especially in January, in a season that we are actually praying. This is very significant. I'm sure, Masi, you have already, Pastor Masi, you have started getting some inquiries uh, of people who want to come and pray. This place will be very busy. Shall we say the final prayer? And that is by the grace. Father, we once again thank you for being with us. Thank you for bringing us to the end of this service. We thank you, Lord, even for your provision for food, O oh God. We want to thank you for all those who have contributed towards the service today. Those who have come here, Lord, to set this facility. Those who have given their resources, Lord, to ensure that we have sufficient supplies in this place, Lord. We pray that, God, you bless them in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord God, as we break for lunch, I want to pray that, God, you be with us in the name of Jesus. Bless the meal that we are going to share together. Bless each and every one of us who came to attend this service today. And let your hand, O oh God, be upon us as we make this place to be the Holy of Holies where we shall be assembling and meeting with you. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.